everybody, and welcome back to the table. Quinn, I'm very excited because you wanted to show off the Avatar Legends role-playing game uh, by, was it Mockingbird? Or? Magpie game. Magpie. It was yes. a bird. It's a Power by the Apocalypse game that takes place, of course, in the Avatar The Last Airbender setting, not Avatar the James Cameron game. I don't know why when I brought that up to people and I said, hey, I'm playing an Avatar game, they went, the pan on Pandora? Yeah. And I go, no! I gotta what has design, happened? I gotta read my design my character then. Yeah. <laughs> my character's not a blue cat man. Oh no. I was gonna be the grandson of Jake Sully. <laughs> anyway, so this is the Avatar Legends Quick Start, the Forbidden Scroll. Uh, so a lot of this information is actually available if you go onto the website linked in chat, if you put exclamation point system. Uh, you can sign up for their email list and they will send you a whole little test booklet that contains the quick start and everything you need to actually play the game. The book itself is still being printed. I got some cool stuff because I backed it on Kickstarter back in fall of last year. So I have everything I need to run, but you can also have everything you need to run if you're interested. So, unless anyone wants to mention something I have not thought about... Uh, out of curiosity, are all the characters like pre-built in that thing? Or... Yes. Oh, well, there's... then I customized and fucked your shit up. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, you, you kept close enough to the mark. Okay, uh, good. But yeah, it does. The quick start does come with six pre-generated characters and also blank character sheets. So you, you too can make your own playbook if you want to. You too can fuck everything up for your DM. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it too late to mention I have surface level knowledge of Avatar? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Enough for the I know the full seat first show. All right. Well. Hopefully, I've pre-written enough of a script that everyone can follow along. I, 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 can, I can help you out. Earth, fire, water, air. <laughs> and on that, that note, <laughs> that's a nice segue into the game itself. There's intro music playing. Water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, and stay with me now, everything changed when, when the, the Fire, Fire Nation, Nation attacked. attacked. Holy Perfect. shit. <laughs> now, after almost a hundred years of war, the Fire Nation is in the throes of great change. Fire Lord Azulon, the long shepherd of this war, has finally passed away, and his second-born son, Ozai, is ascending to the throne. It is a time of uncertainty and mystery, but also celebration. As the Fire Nation's capital, Hari Khan, is in the midst of celebrating Fire Lord Ozai's coronation. However, in the dead of night, on the eve before the final festivities are to take place, a group of opportunistic young folk uh, break into the hallowed tunnels of the Dragonbone Catacombs. They seek what could be the last remnant of truth in the Fire Nation, a scroll in the Fire Sage's keeping. So, Two teams of two young folk apiece are breaking into the catacombs. I would like each of you to introduce yourself with just maybe a short sentence about why you're breaking into the catacombs and what you think your character would do as part of their heist plan. Nick, let's start with you. All right, well, uh, myself and Zaipan uh, are working together to try to get to this scroll. Uh, I am Yinzin. I am the successor to uh, the Mori family. They are a family of shipwrights and engineers for the Fire Nation's military. Uh, I'm seeking knowledge within the scroll because I, I've been led to believe by my cousin who was off fighting in Ba Sing Se with my brother uh, that something's not quite right about everything that's going on here in the nation. Maybe, maybe there's, you know, something that they aren't telling us. And my brother never came back. He's assumed dead, but my cousin believes otherwise, and my mother and father, they just won't listen to anything I have to say about that. They're grieving in their own right, so I have to take this into my own hands. So, uh, Zaipan, who I suppose we'll get to here shortly, and I work together to get down here and try to see what the deal was. We uh, made it past a couple of the guards because I have connections. My family works with the military, uh, and... Once we got to some certain walls that we say couldn't get through so easily, that's where Zaipan's earthbending came in. My name is Zaipan. I grew up in the Fire Nation, although my parents were originally from the Earth Kingdom. My mother was a professional Earth dancer, and she passed on her knowledge to me before she passed away herself. It didn't realize, it didn't occur to us that my family had become 
zoo animals for the Fire Nation Royals until after she left me with my father, who cares more about keeping us safe than she do he does about our freedom. And so I've teamed up with Yinzin to find an exit from Hari Balkan in these deep catacombs. I uh, was given this information after a dalliance with General Gong. Zito. So Lin's life changed when the Fire Nation dock workers had reported to everyone else that an accident on the docks, killing multiple people, including his mother and father, was purely just that, an accident. Sun Lin harbors, huh, harbors a sort of a hatred for the politics and the upper bourgeoisie of uh, the Fire Nation, so much so that he ran off and joined with a small little gang called the Fire Finches. Uh, they're not a very well-known organized gang, but they just do well to live out their best life they possibly can. Uh, one day, the uh, someone in the Fire Finches had described to Sun Lin that there might be some uh, funny little uh, document, a scroll hidden away in the catacombs, that might actually give them some sort of a little boost that their clan needs to make themselves maybe live life a little bit better on the streets. So with that knowledge, uh, Sun Lin decided maybe it might be a good idea to fire, uh, to hire someone on the outside to bring along on this little excursion in getting the scroll. That leads into Teak. Uh, Teak fled his southern water tribe when the Fire Nation attacked. Uh, that sucked for sure. Uh, he was not very, um, he's doing his best. Not the best at waterbending, not the best leader, not the best in his village. But there, you know, a lot of them are dead, so like, who cares? You know, now, now it's Teak's time. Uh, he is trying to prove himself uh, by going to get this scroll. He's been in the Fire Nation for a couple months, and uh, he teamed up with uh, Sun Lin uh, to, to do it. How do you like heists? Heists are cool, like heists, but uh, Teak is not the most, not being the most skilled. Kind of messed up a bit of what we were doing, a little bit. Oh, oh it's fine, it's fine. You'll you'll do fine, you'll do fine, yeah. you'll do fine, you'll do fine. Person who's not from the Fire Nation. Mm -hmm. You'll do fine in the Fire Nation, I promise you. Everything's fine. Yeah. Well, either despite or because of your best efforts, you are able to make it into the depths of the catacombs. These two teams weeding their way through different uh maze-like corridors and guards until you find yourself in a central chamber where a large bronze dragon curls around half the room and in its jaws a scroll oh, hey there it is wait who are these people and in the awkwardness that ensues you find that either a trap is sprung or the fire sages become aware of your intrusion as an older fire sage gray beard stretching down half his chest uh almost as long almost as far down as his pointed hat is tall and with a squadron of guards with him combat ensues oh boy uh <laughs> things get a bit hectic <laughs> <laughs> even the fire sage himself joins in with a special technique none of you have seen before as he spirals out uh, flames from his different fingers and throws them almost like a disc. Uh, fortunately, you don't die. Good news there. But you are captured and sent to the fire, uh, the Haribo Khan's prison on an opposing peak opposite of the Royal Caldera. You and your shortcuts. I We got there sooner, didn't we? My parents are going to kill me. Oh, you have those? Yeah. My father is going to kill me and all of you for being involved. I don't that's rough, buddy. Sun Lin, interesting. When you're looking at this young lad over here, you notice that he actually has some of the iconography of the Mori clan, the people in charge of the uh, Fire Nation Harbor. Mm. Yinzin's just kind of sitting, uh, his hands, like his gloved hands kind of clasped over his face, his hair in kind of like a, a very messy, unkempt top knot. Uh, are our hands bound? No, you are, uh, actually, That's a terrible your hands are not bound, but your wrists are. Right. You 
Uh, you, Teak, have your wrists bound and your legs bound. They they were able to tell that you were uh, benders. Uh, you two only have to worry about a collar around your neck, keeping you within a certain distance of the back wall. But your hands and legs are free. Your weapons, however, have been taken from you. Interesting thing. It's almost as if they wanted to kind of have a dig on you. The cell, a lot like it is in the show, is an iron jail within a specific room. And that's where you all are kept. But there's an also an open space between the cell wall and the door leading out into the hallway. Your weapons are just stacked up against the door, out of reach, but you can see them right there. And this chain is so demeaning. It chafes. Ah. Oh, that must be so hard for you. Teak is just like on the ground, sausaged over because our our wrists and our legs are bound. That sucks, huh? Yeah, it does. Oh. On the bright side, we can do this. Oh. I can do... Fuck you. <laughs> it's just finally nice to have a physical representation of what my entire life has been like. You... You live in luxury. Yeah. A gilded cage is still a cage. It's better than this one. Oh. How's, how's that gilded part, by the way? Pretty good, it's, huh? It's soft. You're thinking about it. Uh, Yinzen kind of like messes with the collar a bit. Does it have any structural weak points that he can like pinpoint? Let's assess the situation. I shall assess the situation. Go ahead. First and, roll. Yeah, roll 2d6 and then add your creativity to All that. All right, 2d6 plus one. Chapow! What? <laughs> <laughs> the first roll! First roll! Snake eyes! That's a three! Snake eyes! Can't make this shit up! Natural wonders, baby! I'm so, so glad I'm trapped in this cell with you. <laughs> so to whoever, whichever mod picked the poll, who would roll the first one? This is as close as you're getting, because we have to roll two die. <laughs> two ones! Snake eyes! First roll! This is gonna go great! Well, fortunately, there's always a bit of a counter move to some of these, uh, but when you're assessing a situation, it's very much, do you make sense of something or don't you? So sadly, the <laughs> collar appears very well forged. I can't see! Can I look at yours? <laughs> I just go... Just like bob him in the face. So time passes uh, as you stew together in your cell, kind of shooting jabs at one another. You actually hear some sounds outside. It sounds like some of the guards may be partaking in some coronation festivities. Loud cheering, uh, some little like like poppers they have going off in the hallway. Very unprofessional, honestly. But after some time, the door to your cell opens and you find a fire sage with their red kind of smock and then their pointed red hat enter. But it's not the same one that captured you. Good. This one's much younger. Uh, still has a lot of kind of jet black ink in his, that makes it sound very wrong. His hair, he has a goatee and it's black. I didn't want to make it sound like he had an ink stain for a mustache. <laughs> but uh, th this man walks in, uh, he looks much younger. And as he kind of leans into your cell, he looks at each of you kind of, rounds as he notices Teak and Shaipan being treated a bit <clears throat> unfairly. Time is short, he begins as he reaches into his robe. Uh, after the coronation festival is over, Fire Sage Bai will speak to the new Fire Lord and ask that you all be declared enemies of the Fire Nation and sent to the Boiling Rock. Or uh, worse. And he looks, he looks exactly at Yenzin when he says, or worse. Uh, However, he does produce out of his I like calling it a smock, even though I don't think it's a smock. He pulls out a ring of keys. I can free you from this cell and the prison, but Hari Khan is no longer safe for any of you or me. If you help me escape the capital, I can give you what you originally went to the catacombs to retrieve. What? Why would you do this? I have been a fire sage for decades. I have seen that we are not the order that kept the spirit of the Fire Nation alive. We are servants of the Fire Lord in every sense of the word. Oh. I hate it. I quit. Consider this my recognition. But obviously, if I were to do that to Fire Sage Bai, I don't think I'd be able to leave the capital alive. Yeah, he's this thing where like... So what you're saying is we need to get you out of Hari, Bo uh, Hari Bokan and you'll help us get out of Hari Bokan. And in Oz, deliver what you apparently sought when you entered the catacombs. 
Well, if anybody knows what it's like to want to quit this place, I'm in. Indeed. He actually puts the key in, unlocks it, and starts immediately going to your chains and your chains. You get unlocked first, both of you. And then he'll go over <laughs> to Yin's and clank, clank, and you're all free. Sweet. Zeke stands up and stretches a little bit. <laughs> I do. I do. Much more like all of my stretches are full body. <laughs> Well, I can. Yeah, <laughs> takes a little intimidated. He's trying to stretch more. <laughs> uh, Yinzin is incredibly uh, nervous at the moment with all of these revelations of having to leave town. <laughs> Sunlin's eyeing his gear. Uh, I want to peek around the corner to see if there's anyone across the way before I go to like just to grab my stuff. Well your current so your stuff and you are all in a single room and then there's a door leading out to the corner. Oh okay, okay. And he and Fire Sage uh closed the door behind him when he walked in. Okay, cool. So you can all grab your stuff and you're all fully equipped again because they apparently did not have the proper security in place. Alright, but before we finish this job, uh I'm gonna need a name. You may call me Nin Wan. All right, pleasure. N I U A N. Now, fortunately, a lot of the guards outside have been taken in, uh, so we should be able to escape the prison itself rather easily. But I can only get you to the Royal Caldera. From there, we'll have to find some way out, either through the port or through some other means that you guys may have at your disposal. Uh, come with me. Leaving the nation's our only option? We'll at least have to leave the capital. Okay. The, fire, the Fire Sage Bai is far too influential in this area. We may be able to go to the outlying islands, maybe the colonies. Uh, we can see that when we cross that bridge and we come to it. The first thing's first. We have to get out of the capital before too much time passes. Okay. If Bai learns that we've escaped too soon, we'll have to fight, we'll have to fight through him and who knows what else he can bring at his disposal. Yeah, this place sucks, so you should be happy we're leaving. Right, yeah. At least I get to lay low after all of this. I don't know about you, though. I'm, just, I'm treating this like a little vacation. I've been wanting to leave the capital since I was a kid. Ah, see? Win-win. After ditching your shackles and getting back your weapons, Nuan leads you down a few passages before stopping in front of a side corridor. And as you pass by, not many guards, but the ones you pass by seem to have been intoxicated to the point of passing out. Uh, but you stop by a side passage, and Nuan goes through and starts actually tugging at uh, the lamp posts in the wall until he finally gets to one that kind of comes down but stops, and nothing happens. He nods to himself, though. Uh, Shaipan, there is a corridor about this big next to this post. If you can move the wall out of the way, it should reveal our exit. All right. Uh, is there anything I need to do? Here? Uh, you actually don't have to roll. As okay. long as it's uh, as long as it's something you're not really pushing yourself to do, and there's no real risk of failure, you can just bend. Right. I move the wall out of the way, and as it folds into the earth, it does reveal actually a perfectly molded staircase going straight down into darkness. But uh, Naman conjures a small flame in his hand and beckons to you all to follow. If we weren't already captured before all this, I would say this looks like a trap. Back in the days of the old clans, the prison was lousy with ways to escape back into the safety of the clan estates in the Royal Caldera. Every Fire Lord since Zoryu has been trying to close them off, but fortunately, they didn't expect to have to deal with an earthbender. We're always underestimated. I mean, you did get caught. I may be a little opportunistic here, but, uh... As we're whirling along, do you have a limit on how many times you can just tap your hand along the wall, maybe open up a secret path, find some treasure, some gold somewhere around there? I can't just feel for secret passages. And they didn't really use these for that. They'd usually hide their stuff in, well, the palaces and secret compartments there, but these were mainly meant for escape. Eh, you can't really rag on me for trying. Yeah. I'm up for finding treasure. I mean, everyone's drunk. If we're escaping anyway, maybe steal some gold off someone as we walk by. That'd be yeah, cool. Yeah. I close the door behind us. All right, move the wall. <laughs> if you want to try and pickpocket the guards as you were going through the corridor, we have a move for that. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I don't want to fuck our escape up, though. <laughs> that that seems like a bad idea. I'm giving you the option. You feel free. 
Who's the most intoxicated as we go by? Uh, I'll say you find a guy who is passed out so much he has fallen off of his stool, bottle still in hand, just... Okay, then I'm fucking, I'm gonna pickpocket the shit out of that dude. Uh, go ahead and roll with focus, but I'll give you one, an extra plus one due to the fact that he's, uh, he's definitely sloshed. I get plus two. Let's go. So this will be plus three. Ooh, plus three. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. So, uh, you do it, but let's see here. Let's, da, 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 da. this is on a partial hit. So you actually just go into his pocket and I'll say you pull out a nice little satchel of gold. Fuck yeah. Apparently they were paid today. <laughs> mm, good for him, man. Good for him. That's a nice bonus. Get festival money. I, I watch over. Are you kidding me right now with this? No. <sighs> so, uh, time passes. I'm, the... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you? Oh, wait. Can I, can I pickpocket you next? <laughs> well, they took all my gold. Oh, well, it sucks to be you. They did? Ah, uh, damn. And then Teeth pats his pocket and says, ah, yeah, no. Yeah, uh, looks like I'm the richest one here now. Uh, hey, buddy. Hey. I've always liked you. Those shortcuts were really fun. We got there sooner. That was the promise of a shortcut, is we got there sooner. So, I throw a gold at his face. I will take it. Thank you. So you then go down into the tunnel. The tunnel itself, pretty boring. It looks like it kind of goes down into the depths of the volcano that forms the uh, center of the capital mm -hmm. uh, and then starts sloping back up. And it probably takes about an hour or so before you come back up and meet another wall for Shaipan to bend away. Fortunately, easily done. It folds up to find yourself in uh, a rather cavernous dark room as Nuan kind of like sticks his arm up. It's a very, sl the door is actually like the floor of whatever this room is. And Nuan kind of has to reach up and light kind of grows flame brighter to illuminate that you actually seem to be in some sort of warehouse crates neatly stacked in rows and columns probably four high you just see as your eyes adjust a little bit of dim golden light kind of like seeping up uh through probably some windows close to the ceiling question uh do any of these bits in the warehouse remind me of anything any emblems or symbols uh... i'd have a similar question Hmm. Let's make that assess a situation. Cool. Uh, you can. You there's an action to help if he doesn't get what he wants. Go ahead and roll with creativity. Fuck yeah! I get a plus one in that. Six, ten. Okay. So you don't have to take a fatigue to help. Uh, but you can ask uh two questions. One of them is, what here can I use to do to blank? Uh, who or what is the biggest threat? What should be? What should I be on the lookout for? What's my best way out, in, or through? And then who or what is in the greatest danger? And so you can actually see, yeah, you can see that oh, move yes. on the basic move sheet, and it's called Assess a Situation. So you can ask two of those five questions, and then okay. when you act upon the answers, you get a plus one. Oh, there it is, there it is, I see it. Yeah, sorry, top left corner. Uh, what here can I use to cover our escape? Okay, so uh, to go along with what you were saying originally, you start to see actually a few insignias from the various trading companies that operate in the capital. But you know, none of these people are rich enough to have their offices up in the Royal Caldera, which is where you are now. So these are probably been put up here for the coronation, meaning uh, you could probably use them as cover as you ship yourself back down into the harbor district at the base of the volcano. So this will get you closer to the port. Can I ask the same question in a different way? Uh, go ahead and ask me and I'll tell you yes or no. Okay. Uh, based on the objects that are in here from the ship of different shipping companies, which here can be used to... What what objects do, does the, do these companies make that we can use to best aid our escape? Okay. Uh, hmm. I'll say, I'll say the biggest thing could be costumes. Mm. Uh, there are also some kites, uh, big ones, big, big enough that you could probably house a couple of people inside of it, though it probably wouldn't fly with them in it. But yeah, there are like some dragon kites, different kind of long cloak costumes. Uh, you even see a couple of uh, faux noble robes. Like if you look at them close enough, you can see the stitching isn't that good. It's definitely not the finest work, but it works as a costume and at a glance, it would look like your nobility. Do I see them? I'll say, yeah, as you're, you're like, 
Uh, he's pointing them out. Yeah, yeah you're, I'm you're, out all these costumes. You're, 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 you're going to a couple of these crates and busting them open so everyone can look in and see. I see one of the noble costumes run over. Wait, no, 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 this is perfect. This is perfect. I have to take this. It's mine. I just packed away. <laughs> okay. You, I wasn't... Yeah. All <laughs> right. Well, that leaves uh, for the rest of us who here wants to uh, dress up like a uh, four man animal costume. Um... Uh, none of you are there. on the head. I am not going to be the platypus bear duck, uh, the platypus bear ass again. I won't do it. I did it for my father's birthday party. Not again. Dibs on the head. You know where we're going? If we're going to the harbor, yeah, I've been there a lot. Hmm, we're on the same page then. Does the, wait, sorry, to review, these are the two costumes, there are how many costumes? Well, I, oh, there's the, more. They're, they're crates okay. of it, crates of it. So they're yeah. different they're different options, and that's just the general scope but, of what but we don't. We don't have to do the two guys in a horse costume. <laughs> we can do something else. <laughs> I want to find the most, uh, not intimidating, but like, not as royal, but like something that looks otherworldly. Do uh, any of these crates belong to my family? Maury Clan doesn't really do shipping. I, I would say I would say that this stuff probably goes on Mori Clan ships. Yeah, I was, I was wondering if there was like anything that looks specifically bound for something like that. Oh, now that would be interesting. Go ahead, you go ahead and have you. I'll have you assess the situation too. It's an eight and nine. All right. Uh, so you can ask one question, and if I may put words in your mouth, it sounds like what you're looking <laughs> Do for. Do any of these things look like they're going to one of my family's ships? I'll say this goes along with what's my best way out, Yeah. just in a more grand sense. And I'll go ahead and say yes. You you find a couple of shipments you know actually go to, I think, Dinzen Island, which is your, actually, your, your company's, not company, clan's personal island. And then you also see a few things that are destined for the colonies, uh, a few others destined for the Jade Sea, there are, a lot, there are a lot of uh, crates here that you could say are uh, things that can go to, like, the outskirts of the Fire Nation. All right. And these are all crates that we'd probably fit in and yeah, yeah be able to... A few of these crates are bound for some of my family's ships. We can use those to just get right on. Where's, yeah. where's your family from again? Uh, my family is from... Sorry, it would home. be home. Oh, that's oh. right. It's on. It's on your it's own on a different sheet. page. No, it would be on your original sheet because this is. A different uh, no, name. it's it says Moria Island. Oh, perfect. There um, we go. Moria <laughs> Island. Glad I remembered that. It's my family's name with an uh. <laughs> 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 oh, so you're uh, are you a little rich kid? I'm not little. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, uh, what were you doing stealing a scroll if you're you've got money? I want to know the truth about what's going on here. My brother went missing in Ba Sing Se. They say he's dead, but my cousin thinks otherwise. Mm. My mom and dad won't go along with it, so I was looking for proof, anything to just show that not everything is as it seems. Mm. That seems really important. I do need the scroll, though. I think I'm gonna, you know, you understand. I have to prove myself. Well, 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 hold on now, now. It is a piece of paper. We all could just look at the document ourselves at the end of all of this. Right, yeah, we could all look at it. If we could just... But I, if I could have it, that'd I mean, be great. If we could just stop by my family's home, I could show them that... And then it doesn't matter what happens. I just need somebody to believe me. That seems fair. Yeah, we could, we could make a pit stop. We can all read it together, and then I can have it just, at the end. Just get me the hell out of here. As uh, as you start discussing the scroll, <laughs> and you bring up your connection to your brother, uh, Nuan kind of looks ashamed? It's hard to tell. It kind of just looks down, and it seems depressed for a moment. Is there a way I can read that? You don't have to. Okay. Because cool. actually, he pulls out... So this does... this. Nice little facsimile for the scroll. The scroll itself is actually a bit larger, and it's two canisters that are kind of locked together. Mm -hmm. And as he looks down, he looks over at you. I think, I think you deserve to look inside. Oh. Are we all just like over the shoulder? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. No, it's exactly it's exactly <laughs> like last last airbender where he opens up that map and everyone just immediately goes. <laughs> so as there you no mad army. Fake news. 
Great comic, go burr. Sozin rules. Avatar drools. I don't... So as you look through the scroll, <laughs> you begin to see that is actually something that has been patched over as time has gone on. It is a complete history of this, is what we would find out later, it's the Hundred Year War. And as it goes further on, you see it details uh, special battles of the Fire Nation's War of Liberation and Enlightenment. Uh, it details the siege of Ba Sing Se, the melting of the iceberg fortresses, the suppression of the colonial rebellions, and even, as you can clearly see, Fire Lord Sozin's first attack on the air nomads. Those sons of badgermals! It directly contradicts the uh, learn the lessons you have learned growing up in the Fire Nation, as it was taught the Fire Lord Fire Lord Sozin was trying to combat the Air Nomads as they were trying to impose an imperial peace on the world, conjuring storms and maelstroms to destroy any sort of resistance to them. And Fire Lord Sozin, great in his knowledge, used the comet to destroy them before they could enact this plan. This contradicts that. So it was all a lie. Everything. Even worse, as you look over the details of the siege of Ba Sing Se, you find a reference to your brother's special company of firebenders, the Comet Strikers. The scroll lists them as mutinied. My brother turned on the Fire Nation. Sounds like a good guy. He was. He is. He is. Yeah, I'm sure he's fine. My parents need to know. I would be careful about that. The Mori clan has reached its feathered heights because of the war. If they were to learn that they were part of this lie, they may not react how you think they would. Now, I might be a little crazy in thinking this, but if we show this to the right people outside of the Fire Nation, we might go down as, uh, heroes? There were many in the colonies who would react differently. I'm not sure. The capital is filled with people who have grown fat on this war. The colonies, less so. But I leave this in your hands. It is your, your crisis. I've never left the Fire Nation. Do any of you actually have people that you would trust with this information that could actually do something? We could go to Boston and say, if we can talk to the fire, or if we can talk to the Earth King, he might be able to pass the information along to the colonies. We might be able to get more information out to everybody. If an, if an audience with the Earth King is anywhere near as hard as it is to get one with the Fire Lord, then you'd need to know somebody high up over there. My uncle, uh, who's very cool, is the is a uh, someone important in the in the Northern Water Tribe. We could we could try there. My uncle's the best. My uncle's so cool. There's this one time that he like he like wrestled like a big polar bear duck. That's a thing. Have you seen them? They're great. I so, think I saw one in a zoo once. Yeah, they got bills. I don't. Big. I don't actually believe in polar bear ducks. Well, I, I saw one. They're at the zoo. The the, <laughs> the one right next to you. Your school. <laughs> I'm having a great time. <laughs> Oh, well, as long as I get my little vacation out of the Fire Nation and I'm not uh, seen as a criminal or hanged for it, I'm okay with any of these plans. Yeah. And it'd make me a hero, you know, in, in the eyes of the, the Water Tribe, which, you know, would be nice. Ah, uh, you got something to prove, too? I do. I mean, I'm already... They already think I'm pretty cool, of course, but, you know. Why? What'd you do? Because I am cool. Can I roll the insight something on that? Uh... Is that even a thing? That, I'm thinking D and D terminology, by the way. I'm sorry. I, I just want I want to see the bullshit like seeping out. <laughs> there isn't exactly a move for it. I think I think the game kind of considers you to take that at face value. You don't have to. Exactly okay, fair act enough. Upon you, can, you, it. Can, you can not believe them in. Yeah, oh, you, no, you, no. Yeah, very much. The game. You can choose to not believe that. Oh, I absolutely. Oh no, like my face. No, is you like, can't. You have to believe. It. I have, I have grin to grin, just like ah, all right, man, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I'm, you know, they call they they call me Teak the 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 bold where I'm from. Oh, you're just giving me more ammo for questions later. I'm very bold. 
Well, okay. Anyway, this would be even better for my reputation, which is why I'm trying to prove myself. Because I've already proven myself, and I just want to prove myself more. Double proving. Triple uh, proof. Yinzen, from his satchel of tools, pulls out just a, a parchment and a anything to write with, charcoal or whatever. And he draw. He writes out, like, after, like, looking at the two crates, one which leads to the colonies, one which will lead to uh, his home island. And he writes out a note to, his, to be found by his parents, basically stating... I have proof that my brother is alive. I'm going to find him, and I'm going to change the world. So fair enough, but just to give you a bit of context, while that letter will definitely reach the Mori clan, your parents are here in the capital. Your mother keeps the family estate in the Royal Caldera, ah, okay. and your father works in the harbor. So your parents are here, but you could, can still do that and have your clan itself still receive the message. I'm going to write this note regardless, and mm -hmm. if we're heading to the harbor either way, so true. yeah, true. Are there any back roads that I know about to get us there faster and without being? Well, I mean, discovered? we have we have these crates that we can hide in and just get there. So then, your knowledge would let you know that there are generally two routes to take. One, there is the Royal Highway, which is the zigzag kind of ridge line road that goes from the caldera up here down to the harbor city. Harbor District. I never get those right. But there's also the option of the volcano tunnels, which a lot like the escape tunnel you just used is just a network of lava lava tubes and whatnot that stretch all the way around and through the volcano. Okay. Uh, that way, of course, you have the benefit of not probably being found by Fire Nation guards is treacherous. Uh, the tunnels are not maintained by any sort of human force they collapse they are filled with lava they constantly change very dynamic so the imperial highway is a bit of the safe route but of course you have to deal with the fact that it's the most obvious way to go from the caldera to the harbor district where you can go through the volcano and take your chances i bring this up with everyone so lava and the prospect of cavens or we take the costumes and head down the highway i would book costumes can we please do costumes? I guess we can do costumes. I find the most uh, occultish looking costume. Costumes it is. <laughs> all right. So you all find costumes that appease your characters. I'm going to ask you what them all are, so get them in your heads. But as you get yourself fully dressed and Juan even finds himself a nice little costume and actually punches out uh, his fire sage hat, makes it inside out, and it turns into like a nice <laughs> floppy cap. Uh, and as he opens the door, you actually see the light of the morning starting to crest over the spiky ridge that surrounds the caldera. Sunlight itself hasn't even reached into the... I keep saying caldera, but there's no better word for it. The bowl of the city itself. And you just see the royal palace stick up like a jagged spike. So morning is just starting. And that is when I'm going to introduce the ticking clock. And I'm immediately going to add a tick to it because time's passed. Okay. So. Oh boy. Full disclosure. You will not lose if the clock fills up. Let me make that clear from the outset. But you will die. <laughs> but this clock represents the response to your escape. The more filled up it gets, the harder it will be to escape the city. If it fills up completely, you are most likely going to have to fight your way out. So at the moment, here we are, representing the morning. Oh, wow. don't, don't you just love games that give you a doom clock? It could be a happy clock. <laughs> this is an opportunity <laughs> to not die. So, Scott, you're the one who wanted to do costumes so badly. What is your costume? I am Bonzu. Bonzu Pippin Paddleopsicopolis the third. And I have I am in full, like full drag as a Fire Nation, like higher up uh, female. My hair is already long. I've already have a very slender build. I am just fully into it. I've got the makeup on and everything, hair done up. Oh, I am I am full royalty, and you are my entourage. There's no way that's going to hold up. All right, well, Yin Zin, how are you going to accommodate? <laughs> I am a large fire ferret plushie. <laughs> <laughs> These costumes come in many shapes and sizes. All right, Teak, how about you? I'm flamey. 
the mascot for <laughs> this festival, and it's just like a little fire emoji with with um the head my face could be seen and uh i found some makeup so i just colored it in red and he has a little bow tie i'm here to hug the kids and i have like gloves like mickey mouse gloves i'm so excited to be part of this festival what a grand entourage you have god help me please tell me you yeah, do you... dress like one of them well soon lynn what's your costume uh, my costume is a dark, uh, red, almost looks like athletic tape that goes from, like, the neck down, and I am wearing a very intimidating, almost haunting mask. The guards would recognize my face. I needed a mask. Are we sure we don't want to go into the caves with the lava and the cavens? I think this will be a great opportunity. Oh, my... He, sque he squeaks his hands, his hands squeak. <laughs> I think this, this will this will be great. This is fine. So, we, wait, 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 check. What's the? Do you, do you have a name for this character? Flamey. Perfect. <laughs> I was gonna go with Flamio, but Flamey works perfect. <laughs> I'm 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 just trying to be a ghost, like that, that. Just some kind of like otherworldly creature, like a, something you would hear in a story of the spirit realm. I'm just a giant Pabu. So maybe <laughs> maybe your entourage, instead of being loyal subjects, are spirits. You have. Spirits that are fun for the kids, and one that's definitely not. <laughs> I'm a slasher villain. <laughs> All right. Well, you are assigned to the festival. You are under my orders to be entertainment for the children. You are a vengeful spirit, uh, a representative of our old culture. You are something cute and cuddly for the children to grasp onto and love, I guess, and... You offend me on many levels. So I, ask... I, wa I walk forward, the head flops forward like a Satoshi Cone plushie. <laughs> Just... So should I ask kids if they want to see a dead body? Yeah, for sure, right? Kids love the dead bodies. If we don't get out of this alive, I'll make sure you are the first dead body they see. I reach into my pocket and show a short sword. You can try. The kids will love that. <laughs> So, you, the, it's not like the caldera is hard to navigate. You're able to get up to the entrance to the Royal Highway. And uh, there is a small checkpoint of guards. They they look tired. They, they fortunately do not appear to be on alert for escapees. But they are people here to make sure and keep track of anyone coming to or from the caldera. So you do run into a, a checkpoint of guards. Uh... Under the under the general rules, since Sun Lin got the plus ones for the assessor situation, the plus ones that would apply to acting on those answers would go to uh, him. But given how the situation has evolved, I would let you, if you want to take the lead on getting past these guards, you would also get the plus one. So the guards stand there, kind of leaning on their spears, but one of them is at least somewhat at attention, looking at you four come in and immediately the look on his face goes, what and why? The head on this thing is way too big and unwieldy. And so he mainly focuses on Suman and- What's, uh, what's New Yon? What's, uh, New Yon's, uh, costume? Uh, oh, wow, yeah, I know I'd have to think about him. Uh, he probably was trying to go off of Zaipan's idea when he, when she, uh, he came out as, uh, the royal noble. And so he's, he's kind of in a, a uh, long robe. His hat is kind of cocked towards the back, so it still has a sense of station. Almost looks like a, a fluted top knot, but it's a hat. And he he goes, "I am your royal advisor and spiritual counsel, my lady." <laughs> and um, what's your name again? Uh, Lee. Lee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are a million Lees. And I'm the spirit of Lee from the past. So he he's taken he's kind of taken flank behind Zaipan and uh, Sunlin with this one. Oh, good morning, dear soldier. Oh, you look like you've all been hitting the fire brandy last night. I hope you all are on duty, are uh, all conscious and awake and prepared to serve your country today. He kind of shoots a glance at the other guards who are just. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I hit some of the branding myself last night. <laughs> oh, so, we're just making our way through. I've got my 
uh, entourage. We're going to entertain the children. Uh, so... Oh, I love kids! Okay. What have I said about talking? No talking. No talking at all. We went over this. We went over this in rehearsal. I'm sorry. I just am so excited. No! Talking! At you! Bless you. Oh, thank, thank you. Sorry. Go ahead. What are the rules for that? Am I allowed to say? What if someone's, what if the children sneeze? Uh, Saifan, go ahead and roll to trick an NPC. Roll two d6s and add your creativity plus another one. Ooh, nice. Nine. Plus. Ten. And is that just, with, what's your creativity? They are out. Oh, that's right, it's zero. Okay, so it's ten. All right, so you can choose two of these. Uh, they, uh, your, MP, your target stumbles, the guards stumble, take plus four when acting against them. They act foolishly. The GM tells you what additional opportunity they give you. Or they overcommit. They are deceived for some time. You can pick two of those three options. Oh, shoot. Uh, uh, it would be on the right side, second box on the on the right. Trick. Oh, okay. Uh, stumble, but I'm going to overcommit foolishly. Uh, what does overcommit mean, then? Uh... I think I, th I think that would just mean they they are, can, are you, convinced you you, you and your yeah, entourage are what you say. We're, we're, oh, okay. here, we're here for the kids. I'm man. choosing over commit. Okay, well you can choose one more. So they also over commit, and then you can either get the plus one against them, or they provide an additional opportunity. Oh, uh, I mean, with the uh, I don't know if the stumble is necessarily better for us here. So I'll just go with they act foolishly. Okay, they stumble because you're too hot. Mm. <laughs> Uh, it is hot in this thing. So I chose poorly. <laughs> the, the the lead guard just looks at you all and goes, "I do not want to touch this with a ten foot spear." As you're just kind of like, just he he looks down his sheet and makes a small note. Uh, okay, proceed. And as you walk forward, you get kind of just tapped on the soldier by one of the more slouchy guards. He tells you, "If you're if you're a fan of the fire brandy, I know a where is this accent coming from? I know a great place." <laughs> You can get the finest bottles if there's a there's a tea shop down in the harbor district. Just tell them, just tell them uh, Khan sent you, and they'll give you the greatest bottles. And even, even, eh, uh, uh, sorry, but they are my. Bless you. They, they, Wait, they, sorry, was I not supposed to? No. Oh. <laughs> You're a great firebender. I didn't know flames. You can make flames talk. Wow. Anyway, just uh, <laughs> the Roaring Tea House. Tell them Khan sent you. They, they've got they, they know the burning embers. The embers know a lot of stuff. They can get you the great things. Anyway, you don't know me. Bye. He just shuffles back. Did I hear any of that? Uh, he was trying to be a bit discreet. Fair enough. Jaipan got it, but. All right. I just, I, 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 I take this information, uh, you know, backing off from the boo smell and is uh, coming from him, and we move through. Still walking around trying to keep his head <laughs> from wobbling every direction. Would you fix that head? I think this is how it's supposed to work. You look even scarier than he does. Well, huh, that's impressive. What was that guy? Did he did he did he hit on you? He was offering me a uh, he was telling me a place to get better fire brandy and something about burning embers. I don't know. Oh, where uh where what was he talking about, about better brandy? Yeah, at a tea shop. Oh, we probably shouldn't. We shouldn't go there. I don't think. I don't, I don't, I don't think that'd be a good. Uh... Yeah, you're right. We shouldn't. Thank you. Great, cool. For no reason. I just don't like alcohol. I think it's a, a problem. Uh, I drink too much. What would I know about this tea shop, <laughs> considering that, like, they're, 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 now that the thing's just like, oh, it's apparently the guy was hush hush about it. What would I know about it? Or if, you would know that if there's a tea house that's serving booze on the side, it probably has some underground connections. And you only know of two really big players down in the Harbor District. The Fire Finches, which don't deal in smuggling, and the Burning Ember Gang, which does. Now, the Burning Ember Gang is definitely the more nefarious of the two groups. The Fire Finches kind of pickpocket and do some light thievery, mainly on the basis of survival. The Burning Ember Gang is essentially a, well, 
a gang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, not enough to be like a syndicate. They don't really have official businesses, but they do handle smuggling through the port. They handle any sort of illicit trade through the tunnels, actually. Uh, so they're definitely the much more nefarious gang in the city. After overhearing that, why wouldn't we want to? Well, I mean, you'd have to suggest why. Oh, no, no, I'm I'm waiting on you to serve me that. Oh, oh, I thought you were paying, but we're, okay. Well, I mean, just act like you were paying attention to the conversation we were having. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I mean, we could just use it as a way to track, our, uh, to cover our escape. What do you mean? The embers are smugglers. They're what? Yeah, but they're not very good at it. I heard. I don't know, they've given my family no end of trouble. Well, that's, that might just be your family. I mean, I'm, they are, um, uh, they're mean. Okay, but what's to guarantee that if we go with illegal smugglers that they're not just going to turn us into the fire military for a uh, king's ransom exactly they're gonna make fools of us and i squeak my hand when i do it well do we have anything to offer them for trade maybe do we even i i look to i look to uh neon do we even like is there a bounty on us uh well when they find out we've escaped they probably will try and post wanted posters but so right ha now there isn't a bounty on us. I don't know how much longer that may last. The Fire Sage uh, Bai was definitely interested in convicting you all. So if he finds out we've escaped, he'll act quickly. So well, we could use this. We could use this to our advantage now. But as time goes on, that window closes. Nuan, what is your plan to get us out of here? Well, Yinzin brought up an excellent idea about using one of his family ships. Uh, if that wasn't going to be offered, I do know someone who works uh, as in one of the trading companies, and she in fact leads one, uh, Sun Po. Uh, however, I knew she was going to extort us. She's a friend, but we really just pi play pie show together. She didn't even come. She didn't even come to my birthday a few a few years ago. There's a whole thing about it. Anyway, <laughs> she'll help us, Shame. but she'll want something for it. So if we want to go that route, I know somebody, but. Trusting someone else may not be the be uh, might not be a worse alternative. Well, then we're gonna have to use your connections then if we want to make this uh, a little bit more safe. Yeah, you got a private boat. You got a private uh, well first class. We can trust my cousin. He's the one that told me about my brother, and well, since he's been wounded from the war, all he can do is really run a ship these days. Hmm. Is that fair? Uh, yeah, definitely wounded. In fact, he's in the harbor district. So yeah. you, you could you could talk to him if you want. He's actually kind of recuperating in the army hospital after your mom after the after the latest fight about your brother kicked him out of the family estate. So uh, currently, our three options are your friend who definitely wants money from you, the burning embers who could if they find out that we're wanted by the Fire Nation could possibly just turn us in, or your brother who is cousin cousin who is part of the Fire Nation. I don't see you offering anything. You gonna you gonna move some rocks? It's not very useful on the water. I can All move right. water. Well, maybe we should put it up to a vote. I say his cousin first. I vote my cousin as well. Cousin? cousin? Yeah, cousin works. Yuka's a good guy. <sighs> All right. I'll go with your cousin. All right. So, as you're going down the highway, and it's zigzagging, it's a bit of a trek, uh, you, you find it's not exactly deserted. And a couple of parties coming up, a couple of parties that kind of uh, look like they've left uh, left for the highway bit in front of you. Uh, but Yinzin, you notice about halfway down the highway, you look up and start to see a, kind of like a, not a flock, but a nice grouping of large birds kind of fly out of the caldera and start to sp fly over you and start to spread over the harbor district. Uh. Your mind thinks of your mother and her aviary of trainee messenger hawks. Oh, no. Huh, look at all those birds. I think they know we're gone. Why? Those are messenger birds. And with that number, it means they are delivering messages as far and as fast as possible within the city. Well, it's a good thing they're not finding the entourage of funny and somewhat maniacal spirits now, are they? 
question. When I was detained, were they able to uh, identify me and my clan? Uh, you, very least, Sun Lin was able to tell you were Mori. Uh, so it may not be from any specific markers, but if Sun Lin was able to ID you, okay, chances so are the they were too. Sages probably were. All right. Well, it's all right. It's okay. As as he said, they're not looking for entertainers. They're looking for criminals, and we are entertainers. I hold up my sword. I entertain a lot. <laughs> Spin it in my my hand and put it back in. Uh, so uh, I'm doing this on purpose, yeah, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's just get to your cousin as soon as we can and try to keep a low profile on the way. It'll be kind of hard getting into the hospital dressed like this during a festival not so much we're there to entertain the sick soldiers he, yes yeah love the sick okay and as this entourage of costume characters goes <laughs> to entertain the sick fire nation soldiers we'll be right back we do not have any images for the characters. I was thinking about before you had to edit it, giving you a couple of pictures to kind of just reference the city. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. Yeah, actually, we can give a little quick uh, rundown of what all the characters look like right now if we want. I'm wondering if we should do that while we're... Cause I want Because I would want that to also be in the video. Mm, yeah, sure right. That's why that I gave kind of a brief description of well, Benzin. Well, you all look different now because two of you are in, <laughs> two of you are in full body costumes. <laughs> the other one's a vengeful spirit. This isn't even my final form. <laughs> Zypan um, is uh, about six feet. I'd say very slender, but very like muscular in terms of like, like that very, almost like a swimmer or dancer's, dancer's build. Yeah, dancer's yeah. build, yeah. Um, long hair, uh, very soft face. Um, the character was originally a woman, uh, but I loved the idea of, like, this kind of soft young man with, like, very feminine features. And then um, you put him in drag. <laughs> and then, and well, I mean... It's well, kind of perfect. It, like, <laughs> perfect opportunity. And the Bonsu Pippin Padalopsicopolis the third is actually a thing that I can do yeah. with the character. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. Remi remind me what that move does. Uh, when you trick an NPC by assuming a silly disguise or fake identity, mark Foolish to treat a role as if it was put a 12 plus. If Foolish is already marked, mark to fatigue instead. Okay, yeah, oh. I need to start getting you guys conditions because those are fun. So that's on the first part of your. Yeah, sheet? it's one. It's oh one God. of his characters' moves. You have the same thing for these. Hell yeah! So oh, so mine is like. Yeah, you have. Here's you... the plan and, sh and straight shooter. Yeah. Those are specific to my character. Mm -hmm. ah. Teak. I kind of went by what the pre-baked thing was. Um, scrawny but acrobatic with unkept clothes and bright eyes and a waterbender, and I was like, oh, so he's Sokka. If Sokka could waterbend. Uh, cool, cool, cool. I've made him a little more of a prick. Uh, yeah, basically, I think that does a good looks, description of it. Uh, looks, looks like one character from Korra, the the main guy character who had a brother, Mako. 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 I I guess my guy kind of looks like Mako, but more of a smartass. I, I should uh, note that my character's got like very flowing clothes. Like usually when he, he you know he, just his regular clothes, like billowy all over. Mm. Yinzin is very bookish, uh, rather unkempt. He's often very dirty. He wor he works with machinery and understands it more than he understands people. Mm. Uh, he is fairly scrawny, probably stacks up to about five eight. Uh, slight slouch, not a whole lot of muscle tone to him. Wears gloves constantly, but at the wrist you can kind of see that there are some burn scars on his hands. You like, know what? I'm gonna make Tika short king. He's five five. <laughs> I I five four. Just I five have, three. I, I can't I have go like, much lower. <laughs> I have like no actual specifics for description because it really doesn't give some in here. So I kind of just imagine that like personality wise, it's like he looks like Mako but acts like Wolf from the Bad Guys. Okay. Um, how tall? How tall is your character? Five eight. Five eight. Am I? How tall is your character? Oh god, I don't know. Five nine, five ten. I love the. I love the, like. Yeah, I know. Fucking uh, Zaipan over here. This tall, slender, like taller than everyone else around him. We get it, Kiyoshi. Earth, 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 Kingdom go tall. And we're back. Welcome back, everyone. So we've had our group of costumed heroes. 
uh, makes their way into the fire into, into the, the veterans' fire. hospital. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> skip skipping to the fun part. You make your way down the highway and start getting into the harbor district itself. The city is starting to come alive. You're starting to see kites being flown above the rooftops of several buildings. Uh, but generally, it's still kind of sleepy. Most of these people are just getting set up for the festival. So you make your way through the district to a large, uh, kind of like two-story bunkhouse sort of building, stone foundation, but quickly going to those general Fire Nation fluted tops on the roof. Uh, you walk in the main door. It's not It's not really guarded. There are a couple of people there. You see swords at their side, but really the person that gives you the most impression is the receptionist. As she, yeah, he, Let's go. Let's 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 have fun with the gender gender assignments here. The, the, you thought it was gonna be a girl, didn't you? It's a guy receptionist hey. now. I feel like it. So so he's sitting there. He looks he looks kind of young. He may, he may be a person. You know what? He, he's uh. It looks like he's a disabled person. He's in a wheelchair. He's sitting there. Maybe either he's a disabled veteran or he's someone who wanted to take part in the fire army in Fire Nation's army but couldn't really apply for any role. But as he's sitting there, you see him kind of like moving a few papers aside, probably the day orders. And as he looks up, he sees Shai Pan. That's, you know, she's she's just dressed. He's, ah, it's going to be hard. He's <laughs> dressed in finery, which is odd. But then he sees the large fire ferret, the giant kind of plush flame, and then the vengeful spirit kind of poking his head out. It's morbid time. Can I help? you we're here to visit yuka we love veterans uh, <laughs> thank you thank you very much both of you hi there my name is bonzu pippin padalopsicopolis the third i'm with a little traveling company of people who uh entertain the sick and 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 the and the unhealthy and we just wanted to take a stop by on today a very cherished day to visit some people who have been reaching out to the company, uh, 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 some family members of uh, uh, of those that have been hurt during the, the wonderful war you've all been fighting. Such oh. a good war. I love it. Go ahead and roll trick again. <laughs> <laughs> or or you can take your move to to make to mark foolish and just take a take a success. I can't not imagine that Bones and Pippin Padalopsicopolis the third is going to have a huge part in the rest of the story. So I think I'll do it here. <laughs> all right, so go ahead and mark foolish. You get you kind of feel like you're you're giving your all to the roll, but a little bit of cringe is kind of nesting in your soul. You don't have to roll. You got the owl exterminator. Right. Yeah. So because because you took the move and you took the condition, you can take it as if you succeeded the roll. So I, does it say is treat as if you've got a plus ten? Uh plus a twelve plus. Okay, so uh just like when you're tricking the guards on the highway, you can pick two of those three options. They stumble, they act foolishly, and or overcommit. Just make sure. Yep. Okay. Uh, um, well, I'm going to go with uh, Act Foolishly and Overcommit. All right. Uh, so I'll go ahead and have that sync up with the fire ferret, what he just said. So the receptionist pulls out, well, it's a bit odd, but it is Coronation Day. It only happens once a generation. I guess I can, uh, let's see. Uh, Yuka, Yuka Mori. Yes. Uh, have him in the private suite, second floor, end of the hall on the left. I don't know why I'm telling this to a fire ferret. Here, here's the, here's the order. Oh, thank you so very, very much. And might I say, finally made wheelchair. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> you know, they they wanted to give me wood. I just wouldn't have it. The Fire Nation steel has to be the right option. Uh -huh. Wood! I can't even believe they'd offer that to you. Yeah, especially when we have firebenders here. It's, you know, one awkward cough and my chair can go up in flames. Oh, that happened to my uncle! Oh! oh. So tragic. Well, anyway. Don't worry, uh, I won't give you a hug! <laughs> I'm gonna you. start walking towards my cousin <laughs> as his cat. As my, as my dear granny would say, flamey o Hartman. flamey <laughs> All right, so let's, my, let's, let's my, go. My guy's staring at him, but he just like pans. He doesn't even move. <laughs> you notice the receptionist trying not to look in your direction at all. Very <laughs> much like... Oh, no, then, oh, is that true? I'm, then I'm staring daggers as I pan to the side. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just imagining your Nosferatu gliding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, basically. <laughs> You're going to help the sick. Listen, I'm an emotional support 
uh, spirit so mm -hmm. they can punch me and feel better about themselves. That's great. You're the real hero. I, 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 abs <laughs> I absolutely am as I pull out my short swords. <laughs> so you make your way up to the directions you were given and you find a, not a lavish suite, but it definitely seems like uh, bigger than you would expect for a single room for a, per for a person in the situation to be. But you find a bed, a desk, a nice view of the a street that kind of goes outward from the building so we can see a fair distance. And sitting up on the bed, just like leg in a sling, is your cousin, Yuka. Real quick. Yes. Three of you, go in. I'm going to keep guard outside I'm the door. I'm already in. Okay. <laughs> you, uh, you two go in with him. I'm going to stay out here and keep guard. Either of you two were to do it, it would blow our cover immediately. Very fair. No, I have no idea what you So, <laughs> a, fire, a large fire ferret, a giant flame, and then a vengeful spirit walk into a room. Yuka is puzzled when... <laughs> You two like come in. We completely abandoned Yuan. Yeah, to see <laughs> oh, yeah. Yuan stands by the door with you. Right, right, right. He's so hard to keep track of. <laughs> um, but he sees Soon Lin walk in and go, by the spirits, stay back, stay back. And he just kind of cowers. I go, I, I go, like, I go like this. <laughs> Kirk, it's okay. It's okay. It's, 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 it's we're here to hold you. It's this, okay. Hold on. I think this thing has a scene built into it. it you were right about my brother. I, hold on. Y Yunjin? Yeah, hold on. It's, it's, it's not... Punch. It's... <laughs> Rip. Okay. <laughs> What's going on? We found that scroll. You found it? Yes. It, it seems I knew it. Those fire sages. And you immediately hear outside. You want... <laughs> <laughs> I just look over at him. It's just like you said, we've been being lied to our whole lives, and, and not just about the air nomads, but everything. Fire Nation started everything. The whole war? The whole war. And you're right, my brother, he's alive. Or they were banded as traitors, at least. I this knew whole company. it. The whole company, they, they tried to tell us they were wiped out, but I knew when Iroh gave the orders, he wouldn't have allowed anyone to be left behind like that. Well, these are my new companions. There. We haven't talked about labels yet. Yeah. We want to. I, I lit into the door. <laughs> and Juan also I, like just. <laughs> I kind I, of I, I kind of fold up the uh, scroll. We need to get this to people that can actually make a difference, and nobody here is going to try. No. You did. Have you shown that to your parents? Well, that's the thing. We kind of got caught on our way to getting it. And now I think we only have a limited time to get out. And that's why I want to leave this message with you so you can... Not, the, not the scroll. It's just the message. And I, I hand him the note that I wrote. Oh, Yinzen. I didn't want to... I didn't want to get you involved in all this. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't think you would storm the Dragonbone Catacombs. Well... I did. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it was going relatively smoothly, smoothly till we got caught. The lengths he would go. Wait, you got caught? Well, we, it was me and Zaipan, and then I met Teak, and I met Sun Lin, and they had similar objectives, and we had an argument, and that uh, there's Fire Sage, and he could woo. And it was, it wasn't great. It, it, he was, he was very, very terse. And now he maybe already knows that we're missing and we need a way out of here. And I was hoping that you might know a ship that could get us out of here. Know oh, a ship? Ah, Yinzen, I've been, been in this hospital for a week now. I mean, I maybe have some people back in the First Lord's Harbor that can help you, but you, you would end up... God, do best case scenario, I'd smuggle you on to a fire navy ship on on its way back to the Earth Kingdom. Is that what you want? I mean, that's better than being stuck here. All right. Uh, he like leans over to his desk, and grabs grabs a quill. <laughs> the spirit helps. Just like, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Why'd you choose that disguise? Hey, you're scared, aren't you? 
Point taken. Okay. And he starts scribbling down. All right. Uh, I know someone in the Navy, uh, Captain... Gonna have to come up with a name. Mm. Captain Sean. Uh, spell with Lee an Sean. X. <laughs> Lee Sean. Looks like Sheon from Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yes! Good, good. Lee Sheon. I like that. But pronounced name. Sean. Uh, Sean. They were the ones that managed our ship when we were getting back from the siege. She seemed nice. Maybe you can convince her if you... I wouldn't... I don't know how she act, react to the scroll. But maybe she, she seemed nice. Maybe she'll take pity on a few fire nationals that want to get to the Earth Kingdom. Well, and a water tribe and an Earth Kingdom. Yeah, you can't tell looking at me, but, uh, waterbender here. I suggest hiding that fact. Okay. Honestly, the co the costume gets attention. I wouldn't have known you were a waterbender, though, at a glance. I'm not sure what to say if to it's, keep or to leave it. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> working. Squeak, squeak. This is a letter of introduction. She'll know me. Uh, however, upon making this choice... I would go ahead and say shift your shift your balance towards progress. I am now progressive. So, little known fact that I'll say to you at home, uh, main thing that differentiates this game from other Power by the Apocalypse games is the balance track. Each playbook comes with two principles that a character is torn between. For Yin Zin, it is progress and tradition. Does he want to? En I don't know uh, how well this is picking up. But does he want to enjoy the tradition? There you go. For scale. Uh, <laughs> does he, d does Yinzin want to embrace the traditions of his family, despite the fact that they're kind of war profiteers? Or do he want to embrace the progress of changing the Mori clan to something better? Since he is using this scroll and the truth about his brother to try to fight against his family's dynamic, he's moving towards progress. You can put it down now. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone has different principles they're torn between. We can get on those if they if their principles come into play. Thank you. Is there any hospital food around? I mean, we had breakfast a little bit ago. I'm not sure if there's anything outside. Fire Nation paste. I've eaten. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. It's fine. Just one check. Uh, but Yen Zin. That letter isn't going to get you into the harbor, and if word about your escape is getting out, then Dad will... Sorry, not Dad. <laughs> then Uncle. Yeah, the uncle, your dad, will know. <laughs> Gon Long will know. And right. he controls that part of the harbor. He may be able to stop your ship from leaving. Well, can he stop the Navy ship? If he, uh, if, he, if he says there are repairs that need to be done, uh. and you'll know he might make something that needs to get fixed. Well, hopefully I can convince him. Good hopefully luck. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. Good so. luck. So, is there anything else you want to share with your cousin? If I get to the Earth Kingdom, I'll find my brother. I'll let him know that you survived. Tell him I'm sorry I left him behind. And I hope whatever he decided to fight is right. I will. Thank you, cousin. Good luck, cousin. Now, I do have a question, though. Oh, um, God. Oh, spirits. <laughs> so, neither of you will be too upset if I were to say, as we get to the Fire Nation, find some way to put a hole in the ship and watch it sink into the fucking ocean? That's our way to leave. After. So you're saying after it's dropped you off in the Earth yes. Kingdom and sailing back? Yes. Uh, I would like for you not to endanger the life of the woman who is saving you? Oh, no, 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 of course not. The people on board are innocent. The thing harboring us, though, I have a little bit of... I mean... I have a little bit of uh, aggression to take out. He, he looks back at his leg. It's not like I could stop you, but I would like for you not to. Ah, excellent. Okay. What thank you for your blessing. Thank you for okay. yes. Thank you for your blessing. What did machines do to you? Kill my family. Oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Says the person wearing the emblem of the people who might have actually done it. <laughs> I just say that out loud, right? <laughs> fucking, right next to him. I'll say there's some tea he can sip for that to be diegetic. <laughs> 
Yeah, Teek sees like the Sip tension Sip. and is like, are you sure there's no hospital food? Just check. Just wanted to check. I guess I, 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 I Hey, if nothing else, I'm putting this in a very progressive way and I'm actually kind of enjoying how this is all working out for me. I mean, if you guys want to stay until noon, they'll give me lunch, but... I don't think we have that time. Not at all. Nah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hear, I hear it's talk. not like there's an invisible doomsday clock ticking. <laughs> Majora's Mask. <laughs> Dawn of the second quarter. <laughs> All right. I think we're done here. All right. Yeah. So as you're leaving, you pass by the receptionist again, but he's actually over by the wall opposite the desk where he has a few papers he's trying to attach to the wall. Wanted posters. You notice... <laughs> trying to put the ripped head back. Yeah. Interesting thing, only three. Hmm? Oh? Uh, you see one of them that specifically says, Shai Pan, Earth Dancer, Fugitive of the Fire Lord. Then you see uh, Fire Finch Renegade. And then finally you see Rogue Waterbender Beware. And you see there are three sketches. Not the best. Looks like they were drawn in a bit of a hurry. I've got my hair all wrong. Exactly. Yours is kind of like, it's an afro. <laughs> Same length, but all up. Uh, what, what, what one feature about your character do you think they would have gotten horrifically what, wrong? What are you the most self-conscious about? Because <laughs> that's more exaggerated. Teak is four foot in this description. He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Fire Nation, dwarf, uh, waterbending dwarf on the loose. Those sons of bitches. I, I'd, I'd like the, to imagine that like my lips are like four inches to the right or something on the image. Yeah, <laughs> you got the Sanji wanted poster. I'm, I'm, I'm going. No, I'm like that dude from Ripley's Believe It or Not, whose like lower chin is like bigger than his fucking like upper lip. It's almost like they tried to draw you in profile halfway through, yep. changed it. <laughs> like some, someone knew what perspective was, but then fucked it up like the last minute. So, yeah, you see... I saw him as he was walking past. So <laughs> <laughs> he was going pretty fast. Like, <laughs> So, uh, Sun Lin currently is... Uh, Sun Lin and Saipan are the ones that are currently closest to being pinged by this uh, wanted poster. Of course, T completely covered. Uh, and then Yin Zin having nothing to fear, perhaps. not No wanted poster. Oh, isn't that comforting? Hmm. A little. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, strange. And then, uh, did I even give the receptionist a name? I don't think I did. Anyway, the receptionist <laughs> backs, uh, 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 sure, ping. <laughs> After he puts up the wanted posters and kind of wheels himself back, he stops and looks at you four. I turn back. around immediately. I, I'm sorry, I have a mask on. Oh, does it, is it not just makeup? Is it a whole no, mask? It's a, I said I wanted a mask that okay. covers the face. My bad, then you're good. Uh, oh, sorry, there's one for... Guess who got forgotten again? Nuan also has a wanted poster. And his actually is much more to spec, perhaps because it was drawn by someone who knows him more intimately. Mm. He actually gets his mouth, gets his head, and just actually, drags it right over his <laughs> face. So he, he just, it, almost like he's embarrassed, he just got, grabs the hat and starts looking up in a way. Mm. And then Ping just starts looking at you five as you're coming back down. Oh, did, did Azuka doing well? Absolutely. Oh, he was doing fantastically. That poor young man, his leg was in tatters. Oh, you have to take care of him. He was such a sweetheart. Yes. Well, if the Mori clan can't take care of their own, then the Fire Nation has to. That we have to take care of one another. Our country is built on strength. Yeah. How much is that burning you on the inside on your physical expression? <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> you know, he was saying that he needed some more applesauce. Just saying, maybe you could, you should bring him. I can bring it to him. Do you have any on you? Can you hold anything in that costume? I can hold the hearts of all these beautiful veterans. Flamey. I got to hold with my hands. I'll Flamey, Flamey, Flamey. Yeah. Flamey. Yeah. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. No, Do you want a hug? No, now please shut up forever. Okay. King starts to kind of wheel himself over past his desk. I'll see about that applesauce. Good day. Can we need I to go read now. from him whether or not he made people? He see. I'll go ahead and tell you. He seems heavily suspicious of Saipan. Saipan. We need to go. 
We need to go right now. I don't think yeah. he's bringing that applesauce. You no, know, and I think he's about to bring a bunch of Fire Nation guards. We need to run. That's not applesauce. That's not applesauce at all. We should go. There are... Okay. Yep. <laughs> we'll leave. <laughs> we'll just let them go report shit. I'm, I'm, I'm like, so, uh, suddenly, uh, kind of like, as, as I, we were all uh, running. I, I cannot expect that making a uh, a scene in the middle of this Fire Nation hospital is going to be any better than him going to find guards. Mm -hmm. So you do have the two guards by the door. So you, you know, you outnumber them. But as you start walking to the door, they stand up and uh, one of them, mainly looking at uh, Zipan and Niwan is still there with just the hat over his head. <laughs> like, is everyone still there? Uh, but they stop. Uh, I'm, I'm literally pulling him along. <laughs> so they, they hold up hands. We're going to need you to wait here for a moment. Oh, uh, what is this about? Your services may be required elsewhere. Uh, I am on a union. We are on a 30 minute meal break. You can't hold us here. I almost wonder if that's a trick or a live up to your uh, rely on your skills and training as an actor. Oh, let's say trick again. Go ahead. Uh, you can. You, so you still have foolish. You can either use your move or roll. Uh, if I use the move again, it's gonna add two to my fatigue. You only have five. You just get sleepy. Hold just, on, hold on, hold on. Uh, gonna convert this situation, please. Where is it? Where is it? Rely on your skills and training. Uh, I am an actor, and I I'm going to use. Can I can I rely on that? I'll say yes. All right. Uh, you're very much a performer. Right, um, and that will fall under my... Uh, focus. Focus. Okay, that gives me a plus one. Six, seven. So seven is a hit. Uh, imperfect. Yes, uh, so you do it imperfectly. The GM tells you how your approach <laughs> might lead to unexpected consequences. Uh... Well, if you're part of the if you're part of the performers union, then we'll have to call your supervisor, since this is, seems to be an unsanctioned activity during the coronation festival. Uh, do you know how long it's going to take to get a message out to my supervisor? Well, you'll have to wait. So, and here's here's your choice, because you can accept these consequences, which seems to be time, or you can take one fatigue. Absolutely not. Okay. Then mark your one fatigue, and you can uh, tell me how, following this line of reasoning, how do you just brush the guards aside? Just saying you have a vengeful spirit. Do you know what the fine is? Uh, um, <clears throat> do you know what the fine is for interrupting someone of my uh, position in my company? I've been I've been speaking with the royal family for the last five years. We are in a direct line with them. If you give me any more sass, I swear to God, I'll have both of your helmets before the day is over. I am hangry right now, and I am crapping. Get out of the way, or this there's going to be a are they, they're going to have to get two beds out here for the both of you. It's true. Watching their performance for the for the longest time. You don't like them when they're angry. Uh, so both of the guards immediately go, "Oh shit!" Uh, and <laughs> while they're not they're not resolved to let you go, that immediate like, "Oh no, the, do not want to bring the royal family down on us." They just got a new guy, and I just brought. And then I, yeah, no. I see their I see the reactions, and I just walk past. Yeah, and they just they, you make a hole, and between. <laughs> Between the two of them go a half stitched together fire ferret, a flame that, that probably pushes them side wider, and then the vengeful spirit with no one just hiding his head and trying to no, fall out. Again, no Sferatu pan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so I, the group has escaped from perhaps a bit dicey situation. You have a lead that would take you. Oop. I was just going to say before we head off, uh, T kind of genuinely feels bad for them and kind of leans back and goes, have a, have a super. Fire day. Warm fire day. And then we go up. <laughs> the one that wasn't talking just <laughs> finger guns at him. <laughs> Doing a great job. All right. Happy, happy coronation day. <laughs> As I walk by, you know, you might think that I'm impersonating my mother, but I'm actually impersonating my father. All right. So. Either way, it gets results. <laughs> you have left a Fire Nation hospital. You're in the Harbor District. The Forest Lords Harbor uh, is pretty easy to get to. There's a highway that kind of divides this this district in half. Uh, you see this, of course, when the 
people are storming the Fire Nation capital in book three. Uh, and that kind of goes down into the large port where you have kind of half Fire Navy, half civilian traffic. Uh, so the harbor's there, and you're not exactly sure what you'd have to do to get in there, but you have your lead to escape the city, depending on how you want to try and approach it. Now, our lead is a Fire Navy ship, so I don't know how each of you feel about that. And it is a woman captain. I mean... What do you mean? Nothing. Nothing. No, women can be captains. I just, I don't know. She, you know. She's fairly well decorated. Well, we'll, yeah, no. I, I thought it, you know, it's, it's fine. Yeah, no, she can be a captain. Girls can be captains. Men can be receptionists. I'm, we're, if I'm, you're cool, then I'm cool. You have a lot of baggage attached to you. A little bit. <laughs> Everyone loves me in my village. I can't imagine why they wouldn't. Well, there's always the possibility, and I hate to bring up conflict, but we could just take the ship over. <laughs> That's sexist of you. You think that she can't captain just because she's a girl? You're on the wrong side of history, Japan. Mm -hmm. I'm disappointed in you. I thought I knew you. Oh my god. It is, so I will point this out. Given your background, you would have enough know-how to, you couldn't do it single-handedly if the ship's too big, but you would know all the things you would need to do yeah. to pilot one of those vessels. I mean, I do know how to work one of those ships, but there are a lot of stations, and if it's a military vessel, there will be soldiers. You could commandeer one where there's not people on it. You, you love stealing, don't you? Absolutely. It's pretty cool. It's kind of what I've been doing most of my life. Well, then you have the issue of getting out of the fight out of the harbor and past the gates when you're not permitted to leave. So we could go on this ship with the woman captain, pretend we have confidence in her ability to drive it, and then if anything goes wrong, we can take it over. I have full confidence in her ability. To I mean, drive. me too, totally. Right. Me, yeah. We're missing hand. <laughs> we're missing. We're missing one big piece of the puzzle here. How are we going to get from here to there without garnering attention? I look to these two. I point, I point, to, I point to the harbor. <laughs> well, I just, you hear Nuan behind his hat. I don't think uh, we can pull that same trick twice unless you want to say we're entertaining the mechanics as they're working. They need love too. I mean, maybe, but at the same time, it just, I feel like if we, because if, if Ping does know that, uh, hold on. <sighs> if Ping does know that we were the escapees, then he, they'll most likely be looking out for these outfits now. Well, then that just means we have to get rid of the outfits. I find it incredibly <laughs> sad. <laughs> like, as if, as if I've been in my element this entire time. And, I, and I'm just, like, looking over, and I'm just like, I kind of see the appeal of this, unfortunately. Mm. This might be an ongoing thing. I'm going to keep this costume. I hope this hasn't awakened anything in me. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, sweet. <laughs> sweet, sweet. I uh, take off my fire ferret outfit. And I throw what I have into a dumpster nearby. I need to wash my face. I just <laughs> imagine walking over chaos and just... Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to wear it anyway. I'm keeping the mask. Yeah, there's just a rubbish bin now filled with four costumes. And then Nuan kind of like, I'll take the cloak off. Oh no, my smock. Uh... <laughs> We should. He 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 tears up the smock so he still has the collar, but it doesn't have her. It doesn't have the um uh, kind of red cloth underneath it that mm -hmm. covers most of his other torso. Should we burn these costumes? If one of the guards finds a dumpster full of our costumes, they're gonna know we're not wearing them anymore. That's a good point, but the fire may also get their attention. I'll just drown it real good. <laughs> By all means. I don't think. <laughs> can, don't... can you do that? Can you drown costumes? <sighs> Wait, wait, actually, hold on. Um, the the area that we're walking on is is there uh, like first of all, how how many people are nearby, and second of all, um, is the is it a stone walkway or an earth walkway? It, it's 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 uh, cobblestone. It's it's very much paved. All right. Um, then, is there a way for us to? Is there like an alleyway nearby? Uh, yeah, no. It's a pretty ur densely urban area. Okay. Uh, can we go into an alleyway and I can make a hole in the ground, stuff them all in, and then smooth it over? Then you can do that. All right. Hell yeah. All right. Hell yeah. I know exactly what to do. Chaos everyone, tuck it into the earth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, follow me. 
We go down an alleyway. I carry the trash can. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, at this point. We'll, we'll just go over there. I open up the earth, and we just dump all of our costumes in there, and I close it up. Okay. Yeah, no, you don't even cool. have to roll for that. That's uh, just, it's very much what earthbenders can do. And no one kind of looks down, and it's like, it's almost like we're burying our identities. I, I like that. Poetic. Welcome to Pippin Patalapsagopolis the third. I hardly knew ye. Can I just say, I'm very much impressed you carried that name three times during this whole trip. <laughs> Honestly, I've had to read scroll after scroll after scroll, but if you ask me to pronounce half of it, I couldn't. Tika's <laughs> just staring at the... I, when I embrace a role, the role becomes me. You shift your balance towards roll. One one towards roll. I like that. <laughs> Deke is just staring at the buried costumes, being like, no one hated Flamey. Everyone loved Flamey. I hated Flamey. Everyone hated I Flamey. Absolutely hated I absolutely hate Flamey. I, I, I like wanted... Flamey. I like Flamey too. Well, it's part of my childhood. Half and half, I feel like that's <laughs> fair. Half is much better than me, so. I think, I think, I, I, you know, I wasn't in the room. I think Yuka may have liked Flamey. But the ping, seem to. ping was weirded out. So I feel like we were really? middle of the 50, road. 50 split. Yeah, middle of the road the whole time. Who could tell? Who could know if if real well, well, chat? You at home, tell us. <laughs> start a Twitter poll. Get into the comments and tell us what you thought of Flamey. Start, 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 start a Twitch poll right now, mods. Flamey, yes. Flamey, no. Just like, comment, hey. subscribe for Flamey. <laughs> We'll check in at the end of the end of the one shot to see just what you now thought of Flamey. We'll be looking at the Reddit. <laughs> and in the meantime, let's just assume Flamey was very beloved, and everyone everyone just couldn't get enough of Flamey. The Jar Jar Binks mask. You know what? For that question, so so I'll be fair. I'm playing fast and loose with the balancing here, but I do want to show it off a bit. But since you were very you were very invested in seeing how your team and others thought of Flamey in your disguise, shift your balance towards loyalty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so the puzzle of the day is getting into the first lord's harbor so you can talk to captain shion and try and get passage out of the capital what would you like to do to try and get a better idea of how to do that we are already in an alley i'd like to use the back roads to travel us closer okay uh, let's have that be rely on your skills and training. Uh, you were definitely, your your background, it, this would be roll two plus focus. I got oh, yeah. Oh. Roll two plus focus, which is a plus one. Focus. Uh -oh. Four, uh, five. Uh, so, he did roll a five, which can get up to a seven. Uh, there is the help move that three of you can do. If you can justify prop how, how you help Sun Lin accomplish this task and mark one fatigue, you can add one to that roll. So if two of you help, you can at least get that to a seven. Uh, I've lived around the Harbor District my entire life, so I probably know some of the back roads. Okay, yeah, you know so some get, of the I delivery get, roads. So I could, yeah, I could get that up to a six, but somebody else would need to help as well. Yeah, so so you've talked to maybe a lot of the shipwrights and mechanics down at the docks, and they told you about their little hidey holes and whatnot, so you've, you've gotten a good layout of the region. I'll, I'll say that adds, so mark fatigue, and I'll up that to a six. I know where they go to get their... You well, are already fucked on fatigue. Is that a good idea? I've already have. I only have one fatigue. You should have two. You spent it twice. No. Only no, once. he oh, really? only spent it once. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you had marked it. He, he yeah. didn't mark one to... Uh, no, you only marked one to accept the consequences. That was it. That's, yeah. yeah. So only one. That's right. Okay. Well, if you are... I'm sorry I kind of botched that, but if you want to take the fall, then sure. Yeah, no. Um, and Because we need to get it up to seven, don't we? Yes. Okay. So either you or T could do something to help. Uh, do you have any ideas? Or? Uh, oh, sorry, what are we trying to do again? So if you can justify in the fiction how you're helping Su Lin navigate the back roads, you will be able to take one fatigue on your sheet and add plus one to his roll. Okay. Sorry, my yeah, character so sheet's can, a little you different. Can, how many pips are in the uh, fatigue? Fatigue five? should be five, and okay. that should be, yeah, down oh, there. Oh, it's down so there. Okay, never mind. So yeah. you just want to add one there. Um, yeah, so either, you, it would be better if you could find a way to justify helping, um, or I could do it and take another fatigue. Sure, yeah, I could do it. Um, yeah, Teak's been here for a few months, and he's been, um, you know, fighting with some gangs and stuff, and he's probably had to run <laughs> a lot. So you've got a good layout of the stages from trying to avoid the Ember gang. Got mm -hmm. it. I'll, I'll allow that. Yeah, so mark your one fatigue, and you'll get that up to a seven. So Great, success. That gets right. you to the outskirts of the dock, but there have unexpected consequences. 
Let's see here. What would be good consequences for... And then the Flyer Nation attacked. Moving to... You know what? Since you brought Tekken on this, uh... Ooh, you know what? Mm, oh, I've got two good ideas. Yeah. You run into one of the... You run into one of the, the nefarious gangs of the Fire Nation. It can either be the Fire Finch, Finches, or the Burning Embers. Yeah, I wonder what I will prefer. let <laughs> you pick... But you may not like it if you pick fire finches. Oh no, I know because at the same time they're like the fire finches are now like the like random ass fire finch. So I'm basically bringing heat onto them. I don't want to do that. I'll take the opposite. All right. So mm -hmm. as you make your way down the back roads, you actually come upon what appears to be a small meeting of ooh, thunder. Uh, a small. Ooh. Very dramatic. Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Sula, painting of lightning benders. <laughs> We're all killed instantly. Thank you so, for watching. <laughs> what you actually happen upon is the backside of one of the warehouses in the First Lord's Harbor. You've actually found your way to a small gap in the fence. Oh man, we walked our way into a Shenmu scenario. But <laughs> this hole in the fence apparently has not just formed from the wear and tear of time. It is a small little exit made for the Burning Ember Gang and their smuggling operations. And sadly... The timing of this could not have been worse. As you find, the Burning Ember Gang is currently taking out a shipment of goods they probably smuggled into the port. So, there's about five of them uh, working together. They're currently busy, so here's where you get to choose. If you take one fatigue, I'll say you quickly stop the group and keep and kind of prevent them from stumbling right into what could be a fight. Mm -hmm. Or you could run into them and see what happens. I have not spent a fatigue yet. <laughs> oh, well, that's... that's right. Pat. All right. So take that one fatigue onto your sheet. And so the Barney Embers are still there. They're not white from existence, but you've now found this way right into the port. You just have to wonder how you're going to deal with the Embers. You're going to wait until they go away. Or Says the Doom Clock. <laughs> well, like I said, well, it we builds are... up. It's just guaranteeing a fight, not a failure. Mm-hmm. Breathe if we want to get in there. We're either going to have to wait for them to leave or we're going to have to fight gang members. Mm. Oh no. How terrible. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to say I've never been in a fight in my life, but I'm a bit more on the on the defensive side than the offensive side. Says the person who can lift rocks. Yeah, I can lift rocks, but I can't take much of a punch. What if we don't have to fight? What if we can just... Talk our way past. I, I, I like he po like Sun Lin points and then gets when he goes. We can talk our way out. <laughs> nah, I like that. <laughs> Talking's oh. never been my strong suit. In the village, they called me what we just a big mouth. Don't know what that means. Doesn't look that big. Thank you. They were wrong. And as you're having this conversation around the corner in a nice hiding spot, you hear from the gang's direction one more. Uh, get this shipment out of here and back to Mars. We have to get this stuff done before the, before the fireworks start. Or this place will be washed with lollygaggers and tourists. Oh, and boy. you remember that voice. Mm -hmm. It's Phylon, the leader of the Burning Embers. Mm -hmm. Oh, goody. He seems to be coordinating this shipment in person. I mean... They must be able to see reason. Hmm. I don't think we should... D d gang members, you know, they could be, no offense, oh. uh, just they, may, maybe real mean. I don't think we should try to talk. Wait, I, it's did true, they say... it's true. I've been nothing but making fun of you all this entire time. Mm. See? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hold on a second. Did he say by the time the fireworks start? How long will they be here? We can't stick around. They're looking for us. Hmm. I would have suggested we hide in whatever cargo they seem to be putting out, but we don't know if this is going out or back the way we just came. You can, I will say you can actually tell it's going out of the port into the city. <gasps> into the city, okay. So they're no. smuggling stuff out of the port. So you want to go in the opposite direction they're going. Yeah, so that's a bad idea. We have to move. If, if, like, if we can try to sneak past them, but if we have to fight, we have to fight. All right. If it comes to that. Or if we want to sneak, then we can sneak. But I'd rather not fight if we don't have to. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> it just happens if it comes to that. All right. Sure, let's do it. Everything will be what, fine. We will what, sneak. What do we roll to sneak? Uh, I would say...
It's if you want to use the opening they're using, it's going to be really hard. It, you know, I would say almost impossible to actually sneak past them without their noticing. You either have to confront them in a fight, try to talk with them, uh, okay. or wait. Okay, maybe we can talk with them. Well, that's I have things that I might be able to do. Yeah, oh. you know what, y'all, because uh, because my mouth is so big. What if I just hide behind you three? And you can do uh, talking things. I'd like to try something, actually. Uh, Nuan, okay. Nuan actually goes, That's, I'll stay here with you. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, well, I mean, uh, if we if we talk with them, actually. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Uh, oh, I'm I'm just I'm just going to wait and see what hat comes from this if you actually want to talk to them. All right. <laughs> so uh, where are they right now? I would say it's it's probably a bit too try it but i like the idea is like this is kind of a meeting of a alleyway one alleyway goes this way towards the opening the ember gang is using and you're still here in this before you get into that alley so sharp turn into the alleyway yeah okay they're around the corner and then a bit, f a bit farther down oh and uh before they go i um i go to yinzen and i'm like okay so just to let you know these burning bros you gotta mm -hmm. be like real don't show weakness I'm not weak. Sure. Uh, just don't. Just try to, you know, stick out your chest a little. Make sure they're going to tell. Yeah, that's perfect. Just like that. That uncomfortable. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, so, your neck so a little bold. back. Perfect. Yeah, just okay. keep that pose the whole time. I walk oh, past. I start, I start walking. Okay. <laughs> Actually, no. I like this. I'm going to say that this is Teak guiding, uh, guiding Yinzin. So, <laughs> uh, Teak roll plus harmony. Okay. So, I roll... Both dice? Yes, yep. both, and then add your harmony stat. Okay, harmony is zero. Uh, six. Uh, so that is a miss. Uh, oh, no. oh. So if I'm being guided. <laughs> yeah. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, he's dead. This is perfect. The fact that you rolled a six is pretty perfect. So there yeah. could have been a couple of things. There's a couple of things he could have kind of helped you with, either fatigue or condition-wise. Right. Uh, but his guidance was not uh, <laughs> well-received. <laughs> I just step out. I'm a very confident man, and I'm strolling through. I give it five seconds. Uh, <laughs> Phylon, he's, Phylon is looking at a couple of crates the guys are bringing through onto a wagon, uh, but then he holds up a hand as he sees you approach, and he's just mm -hmm. looking at you. Mm -hmm. I maintain stride and keep my chest puffed. You... Hello, sir. As, is there anything... <laughs> Is there any point where you stop or you just continue to approach them as if you were trying to get through their opening? If they start to act hostile, I will slow down. Okay. You're actually able to get all the way up to the wagon until Phylon finally just holds the hand onto your chest and stops you. Oh. Where are Sorry. you going? I'm just passing through. Just got a, got some business in the harbor. And you're using a smuggler's route. I got lost a little bit and just happened to stroll through this way. I mean, there was a hole in the fence. It just happened to be a straight line from where where I'm heading. You know, you know how it works sometimes, right? Yeah. Go ahead and roll the trick. Technically not a trick. <laughs> well, okay, no, hold on. There are a couple of... What What are you trying? Because you... you did say you lost your way. No, 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 don't look at the moves. I just want to get a better idea of what you would be trying to communicate to Phylon. Are you trying to empathize with him, or are you actually just trying to deceive him into letting you pass? Uh, I think this is more of a case of, you know, try, trying to just... I am trying to be very confident in the fact that I wish him no harm. <laughs> Let's. Then I'm going to say this is push your luck. Okay. Roll plus passion. <laughs> this is bad choice. <laughs> That's a seven. All right, so... On a hit, you do it, but it costs you to scrape by. The GM tells you what it costs you. Uh, what does it cost me, GM? <laughs> How much you got on you? Just <laughs> <laughs> I would Ooh, give me your hat. <laughs> I would say, do to do. Would your ultimate goal here being they let you pass? My ultimate goal would be that they let me and my companions pass. Yeah, but we are in tow. But my companions probably aren't hanging out. Like... I've got an idea there. Okay. Uh, Phylon's, he's still holding his hand in front of you, but he's not gripping your chest anymore. It's more like just a stop. And then he looks you once over. I smile. A, you're one of the Moris, aren't you? Oh! <laughs> I am? I think we can work something out. Good. I'd love to, I'd love to help. 
Now, I wouldn't want to question what a high and mighty clan is trying to do here. You guys usually have free reign of the port. But I think the fact that you're here tells me something, and it tells me that you don't want other people to know what you're doing. So how about this? You give me mm -hmm. as much as you can, and it better be a lot, and we'll just say we happen to cross paths. I put the I, gold in his, in his hand. I, you were walking alongside him? I, I walk, no, I just walk up to him and I bow. <laughs> okay. Don't know where this person, who else is back there? <laughs> Oh, I thought we were. I, I actually thought we were. In yeah, town. we. He. Yeah. Said I, I, we were in. Town. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. is it just Teak and Nuan that's back around the corner? Basically. Okay, so we. Well, so he's holding the bag. I mean. Now that's a start. Gold can get you pretty far, but. I know. Things about what's moving in and out of these ports. Maybe that information would be valuable to you. Really, and he tucks the gold away. Start talking and let's see what I like if I like what I hear. All right. Uh, in my lineage resources, I have high technology and introductions and connections. My connections would be knowing shipping, like people who know shipping and stuff like that, right? Well, so you do have to have those resources to spend them. Now, maybe we, we could do a flashback here to the night before you raided the Dragonbone Catacombs and see if you had either humbled yourself or tried to steal resources from the Mori estate. Okay. Uh, or people that I might know in terms of, like... Or just contacts and whatnot. Information, if it's if you want to use the connections as the resource. Yeah, pretty much is, is what I was going to go for. The, the idea would be that I know... Uh, I know people in the area that are already part of like duplicitous dealings okay perfect so let's so let's say we we cut to a kind of sepia tone uh night at the mori estate in the royal caldera are you talking to some are you uh, so you have the two options in your clap in your playbook ability are you humbling yourself to gain these resources or are you stealing them it would be uh, oh, i see yeah it'd be raid or humble yourself all right. When you raid, your lineage is resources without consent or knowledge. Uh, when you politely, obediently humble yourself before a powerful member, it would probably be humbling because this would be uh, a powerful member of my family working in a shady deal, and I just kind of bow my head and is like, okay, no, I won't tell anybody. And now I'm telling somebody. Uh, so what do you have to do when you're humbling yourself? Uh, to do yourself before a powerful member of your lineage. Uh, roll your tradition. Okay. So I, think I just took a minus one to that. Too. Uh, you did, but this is a flashback. Oh, so I'll so let it'd be you, a net zero. I would let you roll with zero. Yeah. Okay. Nice guide me. Six plus two. That's an eight. That's All a right. Hit. So uh, the resources don't come without strings. <clears throat> You'll need to promise to fulfill some other obligation for my lineage, or let them shift your balance. I would say you in this moment as you. Describe this family member to me. Let's say you're at your you're at your family's estate at the Royal Caldera. Your mother usually has more connected people in the family come visit her because this is where all the moving and shaking happens. So let's let's talk about this one family member. Let's say they're an uncle who Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna say it's actually uh you know, it's uh Yuka's father. Perfect. He works with the family shipping business, but you know he is a bit more favored of money, whereas my father is more of the uh, engineering savant who just likes to work with his hands and make things. Uh, I take after my father, but my uncle is the businessman of the family. He makes money and you know raises our family's position more, and he uh, sometimes will take some under the table deals. So I might have so. Let's just say he was working with some people to uh, get a little extra merchandise out on a ship, working I'll, with a smuggler or something already. I'll say he's happy to oblige. He's so happy that the son of the, of the patriarch is more interested in these kinds of deals. Not like that uh, gone long with his stick so shoved firmly up his ass. Uh, the fact that you want to do this, Yin Zen, has told me a lot. and I'm happy. I'm proud of you. And that... That almost makes you feel 
gross. But you did get your resources, and I'll say, instead of asking for something from you, he's going to also shift your balance towards progress. Because ah, I'm even more progressive. Yeah, so actually move yourself to, pl yeah, plus two progress, since we're kind of now factoring in the plus one you already got. And so you kind so of... I, so I give this new guy the information of my uncle and the people that would help him contact my uncle, and he can help you move your merchandise and probably sell it at a better area and a higher mark at that. Uh, Fai Long just taps the satchel of coins on his chest as he looks down at one of his underlings. You got that? Well, looks up. Yeah, boss. Good. So are we good to go? For now. And he just uh, points... He, 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 the hand he was using to hold you back, he just points down the hole, and he turns back to his own business. Cool. So let's show for everyone to hurry the fuck up and get out of here. So Teak and Yuan kind of like scuttle to catch back up to the group. And there's an awkward moment. Phylon's not looking. He's, 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 he's following through on his deal. But one of the guys working the crates just happens to look up and see you, Teak. Mm -hmm. And there's that moment of, oh, shit. Do you, like, book it, or do you kind of follow the group to embrace that moment of awkwardness that's coming? <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm going to catch up to my group and, and be like, hey, are we ready? We should, let's keep going. All let's, right. Let's, uh... I'm going to ask you to roll trick, because okay. you're either trying to hide or just go, that's not me. <laughs> yeah. uh, so go ahead and roll plus creativity. Eight. Yeah, and uh, we're five, six, and eight. All right. Yeah. So you can pick one of the three options. They stumble, they act foolishly, or they overcommit. Oh, um, it would be this one. Considering we're trying to get the fuck out of here, deceived yeah. for some time seems easy enough. Yeah, let's stay deceived for some time. The plus one may be useful if you if they drag you into something right here and now, but. I just want to give you your full range of options. Okay. Um, and when you say plus one, what do you mean? Plus one would be if you have to make another roll and they're involved it, on top of your stats, you would get a plus one on top of it. Oh, I see. If they stumble. Yeah. But they, if you want to, if you want them to overcommit and just go, oh, uh, never mind. Thought you were some brash waterbender that tore up Ma's shop. That wasn't me. Uh, yeah, they only oh, overcommit. That'd okay. <laughs> so. Uh, they, they like about, they're about to say something, but then Phylon comes up and is like, stop harassing them. Come on. And they get back to work. So <laughs> mischief managed. You find yourself in the first Lord's Harbor. Yeah. Hooray. I'm I so sweaty. <laughs> this Just water bend it off. Oh yeah. And then he, he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah, come on, oh, man. Sorry. And then I water bend it off again. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> oh, I may not be immune. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I just keep water bending and all of everyone on the ground. It's high noon. So, the morning has passed, and yes, it is now the afternoon. Uh, the festival is in full swing. You now see through the little gaps in... Uh, most most of this area of the Forest of Harbor are warehouses, all two-story, just like the one that was in the caldera. So it's hard to peek, but you do see a couple of higher-rise higher, higher rise buildings and tall kites being flown in the city itself. Uh, and uh, over the din of some of the factory work nearby, you hear the cheers and raucous applause that comes with the Coronation Festival that is now in full swing in the capital. So, uh, you have your target, Captain Xion, you're not quite sure where in the harbor you need to go, but you know the, the <clears throat> noose is starting to tighten, both for you and maybe for your pursuers. I have this ability called Whatever I Can. Uh, spend an action to talk to the locals about their pro. Oh, never mind. It's not going to help us in this situation. Because uh, I was wondering if there's a way that maybe we can... I could use this ability to maybe 
butter up someone of official note to get us closer to finding this person? If you could find, I would say this may have been something you could be able to do back in the hospital if you had found a group of injured fire Navy, uh, fire veterans, fire mm -hmm. veterans to talk to and kind of learn something about their deployments and whatnot. I forgot uh, this was a thing. So yeah, I will you, accept I mean, you could you could try to find a place where they're gathering in the harbor. There's definitely <clears> the <throat> factories, dry docks, different places where they're taking breaks. Uh, so that's still possible, but you still have to find a place for that first. Right. If you wanted to follow through on the move. Oh, well, can we assess the situation to do that? You can. All right. Then, yeah, uh, let's. I'll All do right. that. Go ahead. It's plus creativity. Oh, wait. Creativity. I got creativity. You want me to yeah, do, do it? Okay. <laughs> I'll do that. What <laughs> about five? Six. Six. So six is still a miss, but someone could help. If you guys could justify how uh, I'll take the next fatigue. Unless someone wants to also make that roll and just try it that way. I would say at this point it's either helping or it's or it's gonna be a miss. Alright. But if you can justify how any of you are helping him in fiction, you can take that fatigue to make it a hit. I'm taller than everyone, so it's easier for me to see around and see where uh doc at uh, Are you having Sulin perch on your shoulders? <laughs> or <Before> Megashiba. <laughs> Sulin, get on my shoulders. Take a look around and see if you can find anybody in this whole ruckus. Put the team on your back, dude. I will accept that. Especially since now I can say just carrying Sulin is causing the fatigue. Mark the fatigue. That goes up to a seven. So now you can ask one of those five questions on assess a situation. What here can I use to blank? Who or uh, what is the biggest threat, etc. What's my best way in, out, or through to get to this person we're looking for. All right, uh, rooftops would be, if, you, if not only would you have better sight lines of the whole harbor, but it'd be a great way to go over any sort of checkpoint or, or security patrol to just get all the way to the port. It's a bit harder, you're running on rooftops, but it would avoid a lot of the trouble. How athletic does all my party members look? They all look capable of stuff. <laughs> Acrobatic is in my look. Honestly, I would, <laughs> I would say Nuan is probably the one least able, least athletic, but he is a firebender. What the fuck is he gonna do to firebend his way across rooftops? I mean, I mean it's just like a little jet flame <laughs> sticks out of his palm. When he does that, Yinzin winces a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I got. We can take the rooftops and head over to our destination. And I know how to get us up there. Do so, we just what? Do we just climb on you as well? No. Everyone on. Total <laughs> <laughs> pole. Let's go. <laughs> you start trying to climb up on my back. Yeah, I, I start climbing up as well. Oh God. <laughs> new one's actually supporting them from behind, going, "Okay, be careful." <laughs> no, and I shake you guys off. <laughs> a little bit of a tremor. <laughs> All Come right, on, I'm like 120 pounds. <laughs> Just follow me, and so we go. We go uh, to the side of, uh, of 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 one of the buildings, and like a nook between them, uh, and I and I make a some stairs that go up to the top, uh, like up to the sea. Uh, Okay. Roof. You 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 Fortnite craft some stairs. Oh well, yeah, up. it's it's just it's just one after That's another gonna... after another after another. I'm assuming you're going to dis uh, dissolve mm -hmm. them. As yes. As we're... Okay. Yes. No, we'll sleep them there. All right, everybody, <laughs> up onto the roof. All right, let's go. So he's going up, and he's like, "It's not as cool as I would okay. say." <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's that needs to be a roll. So you do all look, all on get onto the roof, and you see, much like it was described, you're on the military side of the port, and you see closer to the end of the harbor are like dry docks and shipyards, larger shipbuilding facilities. But all against the far edge in front of you, there is a row of fire navy vessels. Some of them the Kind of long and tall barges, the other longer battleships, and then a couple of smaller support vessels, a lot like Zuko's ship in book one, to save myself a little bit of shorthand. Mm -hmm. uh, most likely if Captain Xion, actually no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give you guys the answer to that. If you want to identify which ship probably belongs to Captain Xion, I would need a roll. Uh, you might be able to do that. I do have the most experience with ships, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that my stats are best for this. I would team. say if the three of you wanted to roll for this, it would be push your luck, because you're trying to figure out something that's kind of out of your real house. For Yinzen, he can rely on his skills and training. Yeah, and, I, on will, and I will assist, uh, and I will assist by keeping lookout for anyone who may be spying on us, so I can pull you down just as fast as you go uh, as you're looking. <clears throat> and I will take the fatigue uh, for that to do so. If right, you well, well that's you help helping training well, is, is focus. Is focus. And I have plus two to focus. Correct. Fair enough. 
Yes. Health, health is definitely something you do after the roll where you kind of like go, oh, and I'm doing this Fair. and I'm doing Fair that. Fair enough. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and rely on my skills and training. 5e assist brain. That's oh, seven. Come on. Actually, and I'll give you a plus one because you're acting on the, assess, on the assess. Okay, so that's still a hit. Uh, seven so, was also a hit. Yeah, so this scene tells you how to approach might lead to unexpected consequences. Oh, no. Let's hope those, you know, maybe not. Here comes the bird. <laughs> so you're able to identify that Captain Xion's ship is probably a smaller transport, not heavily armored or, hev or armed. Uh closer to the smaller cruisers and frigates that you see in the port. Now, between the, the uh, let's say, five of them you see, you can, you're having difficulty making out the different flags. You would know that you need to find a specific flag as part of General Iroh's accompaniment, since that was for the ships that brought back his army uh, after the siege failed. But uh, I would say your consequence is either there's five choices and you don't know which one, or you can take one fatigue, kind of strain to make out the right ship. I mean, if I can see the ships from here, would we be able to like get closer and then be able to see there? Or is that part of the fatigue? Yeah, I would say, yeah. Uh, just, just based on the game system. I'll go ahead and burn a fatigue so I can identify it. All right, then you find that there is one ship that is part of, let's say, the Eastern Transport Fleet. It's that one right there. That's the one we're looking for. It's a, it's a, it's a white flame in carrying hands. Just a little bit of flare there. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a shame when I have to break this thing apart. Oh, uh, break this thing apart. Mm-hmm. We're up on the rooftop, right? Yes. So it's a, it's you still have to jump across several roofs to get there, but you now have your target. Teak is looking at all the festival stuff, and he's like, "Hey, that kite has flamey on it." <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even do that intentionally. Damn it! <laughs> See, even God's mad. Yeah, that's How does it feel? <laughs> Exhilarating. Mm -hmm. It is. It really <laughs> is. All right. So. How are you going to get to this ship? If you choose to jump across the rooftops, I would say that would most likely be... It would depend. If you have any sort of training, I would say Sun Lin can rely on skills and training. Yin Zen okay. probably would have to push his luck. You have earth bending, so you could probably, if you were choosing to do that to get between the buildings, that could be relying on your skills and training. Yeah, I effort instead of jumping, I just every time we get close, I bring up the thing, we walk across. Do you want to do that down. for everyone? So it's just one roll? Sure. Yeah. Just, you just yeah. bridge the roof. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I could totally do it myself. But oh, come oh, on. That's a four. Oh, 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 that ah, it's not end. <laughs> All of you would have to help just to make that a hit. And it's really hard since Zypan's doing it using earth bending. So I would I would actually go ahead and say that's a miss. Ooh. Uh, so you do not get a hit, so that does not count. I would say you probably jump three buildings over before the pace of the group is faster than you're able to bend the bridge. Because you're also every time you jump a roof, you knock down the support behind yep. you to make sure no one can track you. So I would say it's almost like frozen. You're still demolishing the bridge behind you as the group is about to make the next jump. So you do not bring up the bridge in time. And I'll say what results is the building kind of folds in on itself near the edge. And everyone rolled 1d6. Two. Two. Six. Four. I hope the higher number is good. <laughs> I would say uh, Soon Lin falls between the gap. Everyone else is able to stop in time. Soon Lin, mm -hmm. go ahead. Mark two fatigue for the fall. Things aren't looking up. <laughs> you and okay? As you fall down. And I'm fine! <laughs> as you fall down, there's like a group of mechanics playing dice against the wall, and they just look over at you. <laughs> Awkward moment, but you do have the initiative here if you want to do something. I want to intimidate them. Go ahead. What do you do to intimidate them before you roll? I put the mask on. Oh, okay. No, no, that's been destroyed. 
No, I took. I said you I kept the mask. Get the mask. Yeah, no, he, he. You did say you get the mask. I'll let you right. use it. After he puts the mask on, may I assist by dropping a smoke bomb? I'll let you help if you. I'll let. I'll let that be a good help action if if he needs it. Okay. Four. So what's your? Wait, wait, wait. What's his roll on? Passion. Pat yeah, four. <laughs> All right. Now, so would, now would my smoke bomb? I mean, the intimidation didn't work, but can I still drop the smoke bomb and just go run? Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll allow that. Yeah. So, yeah, you throw that down, and the mechanics as you put down the mask, and then there's you don't say anything. The mechanics are looking at you, and then like all three of them bring out these massive wrenches, like I they they use on the massive rivets on the ship, and they just all bring them out and just bang, bang, bang. Smoke bomb comes down. Run! <laughs> we should keep moving. Yep. Run. You all are able to reconvene against the far pier, and you see sitting in front of you uh, a couple of sailors on deck playing sugi horns. Why not? It's a festival. Yeah. Uh, but you don't see the captain, but the ship is in front of you. Where's the captain? Where would she be right now? On the ship. I am the only one without a wanted poster of them, and my face is probably known relatively around the harbor. Go see if you can inquire where the captain is. Okay. I walk uh, with my, you know, scrolled letter from my cousin. I... Excuse me, gentlemen and lady. Uh, you come up to them playing the studio. <laughs> uh... Oh, yeah. Maury, yes! One of them speaks up. <laughs> yep, um, I, I got a letter from my cousin for Captain Jean. Do you know where she is? <laughs> they points up to the... It, yeah, that's the long the long wa uh, watchtower. They, you have the long neck of the crow's nest, I would say, before it gets to the bridge. They point up there, and they just keep... Boop, boop. Play, keep playing. Thank you. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. So, you go up to the bridge. Rest of the party still down by the gangplank. No one's really bothering you at this point. But as you open the bulkhead to the bridge, you see, kind of leaning up against the, the wheel, uh, smoking a pipe, is a tall female. Uh, brown hair that kind of comes off in the knot in her back. Eye patch uh, over her right eye, so she kind of has to turn a bit to see you. But as you see her breathing out another blast of smoke, you then see someone else stand up out behind one of the supports. Too predictable, Yin Zin. And you see, cloaked in uh, kind of like a metallic cape it's weird it's like it's it's a cape but as it drenches over his shoulders it's almost like it's armor plating you see your father don long my eyes widen and my mouth goes agape father and i bow good glad to see we haven't lost that now your mother has told me you've done something very bad i had to do it dad you had to say, complete the sentence for me. You had to break into the Dragonbone Catacombs, assault a fire sage, steal from the fire. My father is alive! What? He's alive. All of this because your brother. But we were past this. No, you were past this. I believe. He's alive. Something happened, and he turned on the fire navy. I don't know what happened, and I don't know why, but I know he's alive, and I can prove it. You can prove that he's brought shame on this family, that he's betrayed us. I'd rather he be dead. How dare you! You're outside. You are. Wait, am I outside? You are not you are, on the We are oh, at oh, the shit. docks, Sorry, my dude. Sorry. I you are thought. talking to the sousaphone player yeah, who's not, playing not. a very poor rendition. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, but I'm into it because... <laughs> I, wanna, I, I don't want everyone to sit on this scene. 
you don't exactly know what's going on, but you at least hear him shout that his brother is alive. So clearly something's going on up there. Uh, okay. Looks like he's having character development. Oh. I don't know what's going on. But... <laughs> you're, you're it's not right important. There. So you know something's going on up there, right. but you don't know what. I don't think we should be sitting here. You, you can waterbend, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and use your waterbend like he can use earthbend to get us on the side of the boat. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, does that sound like a good idea, or does that sound like an idea that you think will work and will sink you to the water? I think we should do it. Uh, are you going? So <laughs> let me let me let me picture this right. Are you trying to like summon an earth pillar to just launch you up there? No, 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 no. no. We want to oh. do the exact opposite with water. We want to go toward the dockside, get near the water, and use it to elevate us up to the side of the boat. To the side of the boat, so or to the use like a bubble yeah, no, of water no. to carry you on. I got that. Would you want to go to onto the boat, the main deck, or the bridge? Two levels. One, I would say, to we, give you preference, the deck would be relying on your skills and training. You're proficient water better. The bridge would be propelling yourself upward, more push your luck. Mm -hmm. Which one would you think is more appropriate? I would say. Which what you have the better stats for? So, well, so yeah. let me just let me just say, Teak is a bold. Their whole thing is they have a legacy of excellence, specific things they want to do in their career that kind of proves their worth. I think you have one that may apply here. Let me double check. I would say either this one, because you know something's naughty going on up there. Or this one, if you consider Yin Zin a friend. <laughs> You've known me for a couple hours. What do you think? We can save a friend's life. All right. So <laughs> yes. if you want to push your luck to try and get on that bridge and immediately into the action, mm. that would be rolling plus passion. Let's do it. What's your passion? Zero. It's zero. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and roll. Is it okay? So it's both two. Yeah, it's always two d six. Seven or higher. Yo! Yo! <laughs> of course, double six. Of course, it's a twelve. Right when the narrative calls for it. God damn! Jake all is right. like, all right, we gotta go save him. Let's fucking go right now. So I immediately like get out of my bow as soon as he says, you know, rather he be dead. Yeah, so we'll cut right back to that scene, but first, go ahead yeah. and tell me, how are you, you're grabbing everyone, making that little bubble of air to push you under the boat, and then how do you propel yourself up to the bridge and everyone else? Ice. With the power of friendship. And ice. Well, explain it a bit more. Come on. How do you bend the water? You're a waterbender. So it, we're going under and then yeah. up, right? So is is there an open window? The, the bridge is like... Three windows, two on the side and one in the front. I would say they were open because well, I because I'm saying so now. Because you got a twelve. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> hell yeah. Let's go through the open one. I would prefer to go through the open window. Um, All right. Yeah, I just grab I just grab both of you in one arm or well, each. three of the three of us. Oh fuck yeah, there's three. the wands like. Given what you're about to do, I think I can just get on board and everyone will no, no yeah. one will notice. I'm just going to walk around. Yeah, no, I'm like, <laughs> actually, if you're doing this, I think I can just go up the gangplank. No one's going to know. And, and Yuan right. could actually get some of their attention as he's coming in. He's a fucking fire sage. People are like, oh shit, hey, it's that oh, guy. Hold on, let me get the, me swings his hat and gets the pointed hat back out. Let me on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drawing attention while we go do this terribly stupid idea that All happens right. to work. So, Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Tink grabs his two newly made friends in both his arms. Oh God! Dimes under, and quickly back to this. And as we're and, uh, oh. as we're going under, I like we have like a few seconds as we're doing, and I'm uh, Tink makes conversation. Is like, by the way, I consider both of your friends. Is that cool? I, I, we didn't talk about labels, but I think that's fine. All right, let's go. All right. Whoop. If you would say that about, if you would say that about Kansaya. Then you may as well have no children at all! And I, like, throw my hands down and both of my gloves burn off. Time to teach another lesson. And he comes out and you actually see in one hand is this massive, thick glove that just has different little prongs of uh, metal coming out of it. Oh, that, that just... Zzz, zzz, zzz. And then in his other hand, the wrench the mechanics we're using. And he turns towards you. And then that's the moment when just like a massive geyser of water comes out of one of the windows, <laughs> knocks Zion to the floor. And she's like, what the? And, then, and, and, 
<laughs> Gan Long turns around and you just see Teak, Zaf Han, Sun Lin all together as they like kind of pose around the uh, around the steering wheel of the ship. We're your wet friends, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I have friends now! I don't need you! <laughs> now we're in for combat. You go away. So, combat in this game is a little hard to, to grasp at the start, but essentially you have uh, uh, exchanges. And what the exchanges are, are little groupings of people fighting NPCs. Fortunately, you're all fighting one NPC, so we don't have to worry about that. Right. It's just one exchange. Now for initiative, what you, what I do is I pick one of the three approaches, and if I may borrow your sheet for a moment, you have the three approaches here, defend and maneuver, advance and attack, and evade and observe. And they all have these little things here where you roll for them. Yeah. Now, what happens is after I pick mine for the NPC secretly, you all can discuss openly what you would like to do. And the order of combat is everyone defends and maneuvers if you choose to first, then those that chose to advance and attack act, and those that chose to evade and observe uh, act, with PCs always going before NPCs if they both chose the same approach. Now, I'll get to the next part when we get there. I have chosen the approach for Gone Long. The rest of you may talk about yours. Okay. Um, I want to at least give some others an, uh, an opening, so I'd like to at least pepper him with knives, as I got a fuck ton of them, and I'm very good at throwing them. Uh, question. Is, is there any way for me to see if in this room there's anything for my earthbending? <clears throat> it is a big metal bridge. Yeah. I will say, however, that as you were skirting underneath, while with Teak, you did get almost... This, this close to the bottom of the harbor. If you wanted to grab a couple of stones on your way through, I'll say you can. Oh, oh, and, and yeah, like in my uh, in my billowy clothes, just a bunch of rocks fall out. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and a crab. What, what are you going to do <laughs> no. with those rocks, though? Oh, I'm going to like I'm going to start launching one after the other. All right, so I guess I'll go ahead and get to the thing here. If you'll notice for each approach, you have three choices. You have, like, for defend and maneuver, you have ready, retaliate, seize a position. Those are the things you do during the combat. So if you're peppering Gone Long with knives that maybe say, strike under yes. advance and attack, strike a foe within reach, forcing them to mark to fatigue, etc., etc. And if you're throwing stones, maybe you're trying to pressure him, make sure he can't choose another approach next exchange, that sort of thing. Actually, I think I know what I want to do with my rocks, actually. Now that okay. Uh, do you want to do strike or do you want to do pressure? No, actually, um, I, I have to wait. Since mine are, de mine are defensive, I'll have to wait for him to move. But uh, let's say the stones are about like this like this big. They're smoothed by the water. They're mm -hmm. roundish, flat. Real good rocks. All right, so I guess I'm striking. Quick question. Is the ship currently idling or is it just... What would you like it to be? I would like it to be ready to go. Like maybe they made it look more inviting to me to actually come up here since this is clearly sure. A trap. I'll say Gon Lon perhaps overestimated. I thought he was just going to be fighting you. So he... then I intend to seize a position at the helm. All right. I'm going to try to get this sucker moving so that no reinforcements can come aboard. So we have Yin Zin choosing to defend and maneuver. You know, with the sub choice yep. of seizing a position. Uh, Sun Lin is advancing and attacking. Uh, Zipan. So, um, if he uses any fire moves, I want to. Uh, I want to be able to. Uh, oh God, what is it? Uh, intercept any of his fire blasts with the rocks. That would be. I think that's the closest one to that is retaliate under defend and maneuver. Okay. So you're also going to defend and maneuver. Teak. I was also going to defend and maneuver. <laughs> that's fine. Everyone can defend and maneuver if that feels appropriate. Okay. Well, actually, no. But then there, it, but it, there is a way to attack doing that. It's retaliate. So. Wait, does... Each time a foe inflicts a fatigue, no, a yeah. condition, it shifts the balance in exchange and inflict one fatigue. So it's basically a counter. Yeah, so gotcha. essentially, if Gan Long hurts somebody, you in turn hurt Gan Long. Okay, I think that's actually... Is mine... Then what's mine? 
I, th- I think I'm retaliating then. Yeah, no, if you if that's so, what so you're... So basically, yeah, if he yeah. becomes for someone, you yeah. can just go whoop. Right. So, and everyone also... To, sorry to complicate things, but you all also have one additional special combat move, which is yeah, here. Uh, fighting techniques. Yeah, so this is yours. I can break And things. this is everybody. Not very useful in our so, current situation. Sorry, I pointed the wrong thing. This is yours. So, I was going to say, yeah, I yeah. talk to them? Yeah, no, sorry. So for yours, <laughs> yeah. you can also choose to advance an attack. That's probably the wrong choice of words. If mm-hmm. you you can do any of those nine choices here, but you could also choose to advance an attack, and then instead of using one of these, you can do that. Ooh, actually, this is perfect for what I want. All right, I'm actually going to use my wall of protection, or perfection, using the stones. Okay. Um, it creates a perfect wall of defense around uh, myself and any allies allies directly next to me. And I have disorient, which is pummel and engage a foe with quick blows, mark one fatigue, and shift their balance away from the center. Okay, so uh, right here under yours, it should say what approach you need. What does it say for Wall of Perfection? Right, it should say right under that. Mine's advance and attack. Uh, LPM, Defend and Maneuver, sorry. Okay, so we have two for Defend and Maneuver, one for Advance and Attack, Teak, which... (laughs) Well, originally I was, I wanted, my instinct was to advance and attack, but I would roll with Passion and at zero. So that's why I switched it to here. But if you're saying I can roll... Well, so this is still advanced in attack, which would still require passion. Oh, okay. So now, I so see. the thing is, when you're rolling, you're only determining if you can use these techniques. It doesn't determine their viability. So you could still advance in attack, roll with passion. And even if you roll a miss, you can still use your technique. It just requires you to move your balance. Okay, maybe I'll do advance in attack then. Okay, All so right. we have two for advance in attack, two for defend and maneuver. Gone Long is not defending and maneuvering, so you two get to go first, uh, Zaipan and uh, Yin Zen. All right, while you're building up your wall, I'm gonna try to use that as cover to seize my position, which, uh, fair enough, Gone Long can mark himself one fatigue to stop me immediately, yeah. if I succeed. That is a 10. All right, so you can use your, you can actually use two master techniques. So you can seize a position and then also use one of these techniques or is your is your special technique also? Uh, my special technique is an evade of, observe. So okay, no. so you can use, you can uh, actually so, use two of these. Uh, I'll think about that, you go ahead. All right. Six. Uh, so that is a miss, but you can still use one of those techniques on the list if you choose to shift your balance away from center. Away from center? Yeah, so yeah. it would have to be towards roll. Yeah, towards roll. But you can do that at least two times without any real consequence. All right. Uh, I'm also going to retaliate. So should he try to uh, inflict any fatigue condition or shift my balance, he also takes one fatigue. All right. So you're charging the helm. You want to get control of this ship. Gong Long, immediately befuddled by what's going on, is going to swing his wrench to keep you back. So he's going to spend that one fatigue to stop you. But you're right next to him. You have smoke pouring out of your hands. You're ready to throw something his way if he chooses to hurt you or your new friends. Mm -hmm. Wins. All right, so you rolled a six. Do you choose to shift your balance to still use a technique? I'm not. Okay, so you're still standing there ready to attack, but Gong Wang is an imposing figure. You've probably actually seen him in one of your shows, and he throws such a menacing facade. I have I hate my dad adrenaline going right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, advance uh attack in advance. Both of you can go. All so right. you would also want to roll 2d6. Night. 8. 8. Uh you should be good. Uh Yes, yeah, so you can still you can use one of those techniques, just one. Uh well, yeah, let's see. Buh, 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 buh. Actually, can I pressure instead you can. And, and stop him from uh, attacking you? Yeah, so well, I'm ready to retaliate. If he tries attacking me, he's okay. Going, then you know what? To eat then you know what? Fine, fuck it. Let's just strike him. Hit him. All right. So you strike. Uh, do you choose to? All right. So you can either let me choose how he takes the damage, or you can take one fatigue and tell me how he takes. I the am damage. so fucked on fatigue right now. I'm gonna let you decide. All right. So he is going to be 
angry. He's actually, I'm actually choosing to be angry. Stabbed. Yeah. I, I choose, choose to be angry. So, uh, you know what? That's very self empowering. I'm mm -hmm. choosing to be angry right yeah, now. Yeah. So, he, so, so if you strike an opponent, you can either, they can either choose to take two fatigue, mark condition, which is essentially another health pool, but it's an emotion, or they can shift their balance. I'm choosing to have gone long, have. This whole thing is blowing out of his control, and he's staring like Yin Zin's rebelling. Who the hell are you? <laughs> and and no, so I, 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 fuck I, no, you, no, hold up, hold up. I'm the Geist. Oh, he's pissed. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> he chooses to be angry. All right. So now you roll your two d six. Uh, would I be able to use this, or does this determine? Uh, that would determine it. If it's if you're advancing and attacking, you essentially can choose between the four. Okay. Ooh. Six. So that's a six. You can shift your balance and still choose one of those to use. Uh, so you'd have to shift it. And since you're at zero, you can actually choose which direction you go. Yeah, as long yeah. as it's away from the center here. I'm can... actually at plus oh, one. Oh, so, we'll oh, bring so you, you, you would have to either move, you'd have to move this way. But you can still, if you did, you can use one of those four techniques. Uh, sure. I mean, is it a bad thing that it's moving more towards the If field? you move off your track, you do get knocked out of the knocked out of the scene. Oh, I see. And it's a bit dramatic. It's very much like Azula losing her Agni Kai. Okay. Now I'll just stick to one of these then. You would still have to well, so you can only you because you, you would roll, have to shift the balance. Yeah, you, because you rolled a six, you miss. So you have to shift your balance if you want to use any. Or you could just take the L and not do it on this turn. Yeah. Okay. Um I'll shift it. We'll okay, so oh, your team, fuck. your new, your, your newly declared friends are under attack. You have to do something. Gone long, maybe trying to scare you, but you're not into it. So yeah. now you can pick one of these four to use. Cool. Um, let me let me uh, tag team with the uh, Zenlin. All right. So what does tag team say? Uh, work with an ally against the same foe. Choose an engaged foe and an ally. Double any fatigue conditions or balance shifts that ally inflicts upon that foe. Fuck yeah. So, at the, so actually, dealer's choice. You only have the one opponent and everyone's engaged with him. So yeah. just pick one of your allies to have that double fatigue hit or just double hit. With. Uh, I it, think Sunlin, because Sunlin's do yeah. the most fatigue. I, I'm actually like actively attacking this dude. Sweet, let's do that. Yeah. All right, so you're flanking. So uh, you're coming at him with the swords. You're coming at him from the other side with just all the water that's sprayed into the room, and you're just whipping him left and right. He's definitely in battle, just trying to parry all these attacks. Yeah. All right, so now we've gotten to invade and observe. This is where Gon Long is actually going to come in, and you see him as he's fighting you all back. You notice this, his piercing gaze. He's trying to find a weakness. He's trying to find that moment when he can turn the tables. He's on the defensive now, but he may just be getting what he needs to turn things to his advantage. Sean, get off your ass and help. Sorry if I peeked the mic. <laughs> All right, so next. So here's the interesting thing about combat. The exchange is now over. If everyone is still committed to fighting, we would start a new exchange. But we don't have to if you're... Well, so Gon Long is committed to still fighting. He wants to end this rebellion from his son and get rid of these three people that have corrupted my boy. Uh, <laughs> but if you guys would want to try to say, uh, talk him down or something, that wouldn't move us into another I have exchange. no intention to do so. All right. So if you're all still committed to fighting, then it's the next exchange. But I want to give you the opportunity I, to... I can do straight shooter. What does that one do? Um, when you tell an NPC the blunt, honest truth about what you really think of them and their plans, roll with focus. On a hit, they'll look upon your honesty favorably. They'll answer a non-compromising question honestly and grant you a simple favor. On a 7 to 9, they also give you an honest assessment of how they see you. Mark a condition. On a miss, you're a bit too honest. They're either furious or genuinely hurt. That's a weird thing to use here, but I almost want you to do it. Uh... <laughs> You know what? We're all, we're already. Well, I mean, we started late, so we're not exactly over time. But go ahead and do it. Let's do it. Why okay, not? Sure. Either this works or it doesn't. Uh huh. <laughs> That's my motto in life. Either this is gonna work or it's not. Um, It'll be two d six plus. Is it anything? Would it say roll with anything? Roll, roll with, with, roll with focus. focus. Plus one. So plus one. Yep. Fuck. Oh no. Four. Five. Yeah. Uh. So what does it happen? What does it happen on a miss? Did uh, anyone help me? 
Is that a thing? I don't think they can help you That's on this fair. one. Sorry. I don't think you want to take fatigue in the I'm, middle of this. Yeah, I'm going to follow guys, this I, first If I day. take too fatigue, I'm fucked. <laughs> That's fair. That's oh, fair. well, they're already pissed. So I guess the, he's already pissed. So I'm going to go ahead and... Am I... So what do, what do you tell him? You're trying to shoot straight. How do you tell him his rules are dumb? Listen, this sucks, dude. Why are, <laughs> <laughs> what are you... Why are you being a bad dad, man? Ooh, like your son dad. like stood up to you and you're doing evil shit, apparently. We could all hear your stuff going on. That's why we came on this boat. I, I'm ha I have friends for the first time in my life. I'm and... just looking at you, like, watching this, like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm I... throwing knives at him, dude! Yeah, maybe we don't have to throw knives! Maybe we can all just talk <laughs> it out, go to some fucking family therapy instead of trying to murder your son and his friends! Chill out, man! Is this... the trash... that's corrupted your spirit?! Can I launch a rock at his head? Uh, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to say black koala sheep. No, Dad! You have corrupted my spirit! <laughs> what does Black Koala Sheep do? Black Koala Sheep, when you behave in a way that shocks and unsettles people from one of your backgrounds, which inevitably I'd share some with my father, uh, I may choose to roll with creativity to either intimidate or push my luck. In this case, I'm guessing push my luck because my dad doesn't, I'm not going to scare my dad. <laughs> they, well, one of the options to intimidate is attack you but off balance oh you know what fair i'm going to try and scare my dad with my little wiry frame yeah fucking do yeah. it fuck you dad creativity let's fucking go he doesn't give a oh, shit no. oh. he zero fucks. so okay i rolled i rolled snake eyes again so this is what happens no dad you know what <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ, I sided with you people. I would like to once yes, again... Yes. I don't know how to process emotions. What do you do? I would like to once again ask if I can launch a rock at his head. I think we're still fighting. I think, I think, I think that means one. we've started the next combat exchange. Yeah. So pick, pick your approaches again. My, I'm doing my, the same thing. Uh... I have invade and observe, bolster or hinder, uh, aid or impede a nearby character inflicting an appropriate status. While he's fucking trying to process his son doing a fucking cringe fest wine, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking shove the shit out of him. All right. So that's gonna be an evade and observe. So that'll be one of the last things to go. Found, found family, bitch. We're we're taking over. Through my streams of tears, which you're allowed to water bend. I... <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, and I'm like, making a sword. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Oh yeah, I've accidentally made a whole sword with your with your tears. It's so metal. Made like an Assassin's Creed fucking wrist blade with the tears. No, oh, no, no, I can fix this, and I make like a nice little scarf. Yeah, and I put it around my. I friend. made it with my tears, oh. Squidward. <laughs> All I'm right, wondering I'm, just how much the mic is picking I'm, up I'm, at this I'm point. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> defending and maneuvering. Okay. Uh, Saipan? Shopan? I'm going to use the, his momentum. Uh, is uh, that... Yeah, it's one of my moves. Well, oh, wait, okay. What, what does that work with? Uh, let's see. When you were engaged with... No, a it'll roll... Is it advance and attack, defend, maneuver? Yeah, or it's got to be the basic no, no, technique. No, no, no. Well, for... I, I, see, oh, I, me... I see what he's doing. This oh. may happen before the exchange. Oh, okay. So what, what's the move say? When you are engaged with a large or powerful uh, foe, mark fatigue to advance and attack with focus ah. instead of passion. Okay. If okay. you do, you become prepared and may also choose to use retaliate if uh, it were an advance and technique... Uh, sorry, advance and attack technique. Okay, so he's definitely qualified for that starting bit so you have what you need for an advance and attack bonus if All you right. want to switch the stat okay so i just roll uh oh. well when we get to advance oh, and attack God. yes but nick still wants to do defend and maneuver what is teak doing um, if you want to describe what you would want to do and i can try and fiddle that whittle that down into an approach uh because they're like attacking so yes. i should probably y yeah this is defending <laughs> ourselves at this point yeah um I panic a little, trying to make things better. So I'm probably going to. Um. 
Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what pressure does. Just... Pressure would keep him from picking one of those approaches. So you would force him to, if you like, say, okay, we, I don't want you to advance and attack anymore. So you're going to force him to either defend a maneuver or evade and observe. Uh, pressure. Okay, so that would be advance and attack. Uh, advance and attack. Advance and attack. Evade and observe. Okay, so you're last, so you go first, Nick. Okie dokie. Uh, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you can choose one of those techniques in the I am going to attempt to seize my position at the helm again. Just cry. <laughs> and just push past him. I'm going to say with what everyone else is doing, he won't be able to stop you. You do get to the helm. I'm getting to the helm and you can't stop me now. Almost hitting ships as we go along, like ramming into shit. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> the captain's gonna have a very rude awakening that'll be fun uh all right so i'm gonna straight through the fire gates and you can't stop uh, me that's it for defend and maneuver i'm going to have uh gone long let's see would we call this an advantageous position <laughs> Like as you are I'm, controlling. Trying, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to flip out the rules here. I mean, you are you are at the helm, which means you probably okay, have a cool. little bit of control over everything else in the scene. Yeah, I now control the balance of the room. I'd say we have the high ground. <laughs> What's okay. he gonna I'm, do? I'm trying, I'm trying to like I didn't actually read the rest of it. So you, all I knew was you at this at this point you run to the reel and just quickly. <laughs> Pull, the, pull a couple letters and turn the wheel, and then you immediately hear the Sugi horn go, <laughs> and it's the whole, outside uh, oh, no. the whole room leans a bit to the left as, uh, okay, now uh, Zaivhan and Teak, both of you roll your 2d6s, since so you move into advance and attack. Oh, uh, fucking god, shit. So you've got a seven, which means you can use one of those from the list without having to shift your balance. You've chosen pressure, all right, so you've got that. Uh, Three. Are you shifting your balance to still use a technique? Fuck, I am. All right, so you shift your, uh, you probably you shift towards roll, which means you're embracing your earth dancing traditions and capabilities. Which makes sense. So, what technique are you using in advance and attack? Uh, strike. All right, so. Uh, are you taking one fatigue to force the choice, or are you allowing me to choose how he takes the damage? Uh, I can't. Uh, wait, fatigue? I'll you take can, the fatigue. Okay, so if you mark one fatigue, you hammer him with your blows, forcing him to mark two fatigue or strike where they're weak. And so you can choose either the two fatigue or condition for me. Hold on, sorry. Two fatigue would fuck him up at this yeah, point, I think. But if, I, I, if, I, if, if his fatigue is limited to the same kind we have. I don't know how enemy NPCs work. Uh, that's the DM code. That was the DM phase for it. He's got an, um, another bar. He's got yeah, another yeah, bar. It's hard, it's hard to say. <laughs> for those of you playing at home, he's a master NPC. Oh, well, oh good. We're fighting at level 20. Sounds weak. <laughs> well, there's four levels. Minor, major, master, legendary. And oh. the avatars are legendary. Okay. Let's fight an avatar. <laughs> let's Look, do that. Let, let's fight the thing You only have faces. one and he's asleep. Yeah. Let's wake him up. I don't think I can take, I, I shouldn't take another <laughs> fatigue immediately after that. So well, no, if you if you just took the one fatigue, you can now choose if I'm taking two fatigue or a condition. Oh, you're is you're essentially taking a condition. You're essentially you're taking, taking fatigue, sorry, sorry, double damage. But since I did the strike, you know, it says strike a foe in reach, forcing them to mark two fatigue, mark a condition, or shift their balance yeah, to yeah. the center of their choice. Mark one fatigue to instead choose to hammer. <clears throat> yeah. So what? I interpret this to mean that originally, if you just use strike, I can choose between the three different things. Oh, okay. You're oh, marking, oh, so I've, oh, you're marking okay. one. You're marking oh. one fatigue to, rem, to yeah, 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 yeah. move okay. that choice from. All right, right, right. Sorry, I didn't realize that what you'd done was part of that. Okay. Yeah. So you've marked okay. the one fatigue, okay, and you can now choose if Gon Long takes two fatigue or marks a condition. Uh, I'm gonna say. Well, what, the, what would the conditions be? Uh, angry, afraid, insecure, guilty, foolish. The one, the same five you have. Currently, he's oh, chosen yeah. anger. Yeah, so he's already angry, but you can make him afraid, insecure, guilty, or foolish. You call that a dick? <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, if you want to remove a lot of stakes from this, you could like hit him in the Fight. balls. Wow, finding your son, that's you know sure, it's a tiny penis Actually, you got there. Uh, in retrospect, I don't think I'm going to take the fatigue for okay. that. Um, I, and I'm just, I'll let you choose. I'll so. let him feel insecure on his own. But I am, I am, I can at least say what I'm trying to do. Yeah, no, I, I would want you to describe what you're doing in the picture. Okay, I'm I shoot just... him, I'll shoot a rock at his head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what are you doing to pressure him? Um, just in the fiction, what what would Teak do? Well, it says impress or intimidate a foe. I'm gonna say I impress him. I say, hey, look at this, and I do a perfect handstand. I don't think it means that kind of impress, but, but it's whatever. Impressive. I, he, he so he as so the rock hits him. He's looking back to try and shoot <laughs> Titanic, and legs, then he keeps so looking. To look at Teak. <laughs> Doing a perfect dance. <laughs> check this out. Check this out. And I, I do a push up. All right. So Ooh, what approach do you want him to not use? One of those, one of these three. Yeah. What's he been using so far? He has used actually evade and observe so far. That was the one he used last exchange. So, mm -hmm. so he's, he's, he's amping up for something. I would imagine that attack. He's charging. Yeah, maybe I should. Um... I will say this will not apply to what he does. He does this exchange will apply to the next exchange. So you have to choose if he's going to do defend, advance, or evade, and you just basically block out that ability. Mm -hmm. So what do you think he's going to do next turn? That's a good question. I've just yeah, met we don't man. know the meta. <laughs> I've just yeah. met your dad. I well, I mean, know. I mean, like from the basic techniques, not like the actual thing he's going to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's see. If he did evade and observe last turn, I think he's going to advance and attack this turn. So the next turn he might do defend and maneuver. So fuck defending yeah, next just turn. Don't, just don't let him defend. All right. Keep the pressure up. So you yeah. negate right. his ability to choose defend and maneuver. Yeah. All right. He's so impressed by the handstand that he just drops his guard. Yeah. So John Long's turn because he's just choosing to advance and attack this turn. He is going to. Uh, does, uh, oh, so he goes. Yeah, yeah no, he. It's he's yeah, attacking and observing. I have to evade and observe. So. Don't forget to clear one fatigue if we're choosing yes, that approach. Yes, which is true. So uh, I am down one. He is going to strike Shaipan. He is going to reach out with his pronged glove and grasp your throat. You just feel a surge of nervous energy course down and up your body. Mm -hmm. And as you freeze in place, he looks at you and goes. You are always Earth Kingdom trash. Why we brought you here, I'll never understand. And he throws you onto the floor. He will mark one fatigue to force you to mark insecure as a condition. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Now for his second technique, which is how, which is what he got from using the technique last exchange, he is going to take his wrench, slam it into a pipe near the far wall, and the room will fill with steam. <clears throat> Everyone's everyone should be considered impaired. You're uh, slowed or off balance. Mark one fatigue or take minus two to all physical actions. Is that I'm, anything I'm, on this basic techniques list, basically? Yeah, if, it, it's, if it's something you're physically doing, including one of those combat techniques, it would be with minus two to your roll. All right. I'm going to take a fatigue. Me too. Same. Uh, he will also take a fatigue to negate his uh, blindness as well, since it's affected uh, everyone take a in fatigue, the room. So I'm back to where I was. All right. Uh, let's see. He was also favored. Oh, which means he gets to choose one more technique. He is going to smash... Uh, nice. <laughs> I'm gonna so, fuck your dad. So, <laughs> so after he's impaired now, insecure. So after using the I'll wrench, show you a dick. After I'm using your new dad. after using the wrench to knock away the pipe, he brings it down on a backswing and sweeps it under your legs. Hot. So cool. uh, he's marking one fatigue to destroy or destabilize something in the environment. Uh, so he is going to, I'm gonna say, trap you. Mm -hmm. as he brings it down and actually sticks you into the floor with the wrench. Like he's ah. divoted the floor and knocked you into place. Mm -hmm. So you are trapped. You're completely helpless. You must mark a con combination of three conditions or fatigue to escape. Oh, fuck. How trapped am I? Like my arms? I would say or... he's actually made a hole in the floor and it's <clears throat> right... Uh, it's part where the bridge is just sticking out over the nest, so it's open air. So actually all your water kind of spills out and you're caught in the flow and you're just waist high. I am. Interesting, not... okay. Have... So you could still pull yourself out, but you'd still have to mark that three conditions or fatigue to get out. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, there's water under... Is this a hole in the bottom of the boat? 
Well, no, remember, this is the bridge, which is elevated up above the rest of the ship. It's let that whole little... Oh. So you're here. So the waters come out because you brought water with you when you jumped up there. I see. So it's like a diving board kind of situation. Yes, exactly. Oh. So you're kind of stuck in the board, <laughs> oh, no. for lack of a better word. Okay. Uh, so you can get out, but you'd have to mark that three conditions or three fatigue or some combination of the sun. Okay. All right. So that's... It for Gone Long, now for Sun Lin. How is Hinder going to help in this scenario? Uh, aid or impede a nearby character inflicting. So you, so I would say you, give you could these. take Teak out of the hole. That's what I'm planning on. Yeah, you could make a hole. <laughs> I'm in the hole. So yeah, go ahead and roll for the for the approach. <clears throat> I think these are called stance moves in the book, but I I haven't read the book enough. Five six. Okay, so yeah, that's a miss, but you can still shift your balance away from center to use the technique. I haven't done so already. Do I get to choose or if it's as if you're still at zero, yes, you can choose the direction. Action. So I I choose that's the shift. Action Jake. I would say that definitely works for what you're doing. You're de you're taking action to help your friend and yep. stop this bad man. So you rush over to Teak. And mm -hmm. I'm not I shouldn't be doing the fiction for you, but I'm just trying to get everyone into the mindset. Mm -hmm. so yeah. How are you helping Teak get out of the hole? Uh, I'm in the hole. Well, I actually, uh, I use, I kick my foot down on the wrench to make the hole bigger, grab him by the leg and pull him back out. Oh. <laughs> oh, and then, yeah, I just like roll out. I'm like, ah, thank you. All right. I put you back on your hand. So man. that's oh, the yay. end of the combat exchange. <laughs> Gong Long has now realized he has lost control of the ship. So he is turning to Yinzen and shouting, Boy, stop this! Think of your mother. Think of your family. You are bringing us to ruin! I am thinking of my family. What do I have to roll? Uh, if you're choosing to not stop what you're doing, you would be denying a call-out, because he's essentially calling you to act uh, as ah, okay. tradition. So, this is you rolling with the principle. So you're rolling with your tradition, which is currently... At minus two. Which is good, because this is a roll you want to miss. If you Aha! If you Fuck you, Dad! Minus two. That's six. All right, so that is a miss. You Fuck you, Dad! You stand strong. Clear condition, clear one fatigue, or shift your balance. Your choice. Uh, oh, man, it would be thematically appropriate to just be even more progressive, but you know what? Uh, I'm going to get rid of one fatigue just in case. All right, so his attempt to stop this thing has failed. No! <laughs> Does anyone no! <laughs> else want to do something before we try another combat exchange? Your rules stink. Write that one out for the chat. When you stand up to an adult by telling them their rules are stupid, <laughs> roll with passion. On a hit, you are they are surprised by your argument. They must shift their balance to offer a way forward past the rules. On a ten plus both, uh, on a ten, oh, excuse me, on a ten plus it's both. On a miss, your efforts to move them only reveal how strongly they are to believe in the system. Mark a condition as a resistance, leaving you reeling. Hell yeah. It's a stretch, but I like where this is going. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> I get plus one to this. Nice. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So tell eight. him how his rules stink before we before we actually adjudicate the role. Think think of your so he says, think of your mother. How can he think when his father is abusing him and I hit him with the fucking hilt of my sword in his chin? Do you want to tell him a bit about your family? Oh, that's fair. You know what? I forgot about that bit. I I'm forgot really, about my family. We're in the middle of, bit of the action. Uh, think of your mother. I can't because you killed them, you sack of shit! Alright, so that is a 9. So that's a hit, but not a plus 10. Remind me what yeah. it says for a hit. Uh, on hit, they are surprised by your argument. They must shift their balance or offer you a way forward past the rules. Okay. So there's a moment of pause. <laughs> as he's... He's not, he's definitely too massive to pin with just your smaller frame, mm -hmm. but it's enough to make him stop. And he's looking at Yenzen's back. But then his eyes just kind of slowly go down to Sun Lin. I didn't mean for your parents to die, and I'm sorry, but I cannot allow this. He's going to shift his balance. So, Let's go. now that we're bringing ourselves in danger, danger, uh, danger of something i will go ahead and tell you what happens if your balance needs to shift off your track uh you lose your balance so 
If you if your balance shifts past the end of your track, you lose your balance. You obsess over that principle to a degree that's not healthy for you or anyone around you. Choose one of the following. All three of them are bad, but you can look on your it's under the balance moves in mm -hmm. your sheet, and it's the one it's at the bottom middle column. But you choose one of those three, and you're essentially taking yourself out of the scene. NPCs can also lose their balance if they move off their track. So shifting an NPC's balance is a viable way to eliminate them if, say, they're too strong to immediately take out in combat. Mm. Something to bring up now that it looks like Gong Long is starting to crack mm -hmm. under pressure. So, anyone else want to do something before Gong Long resumes his assault and we bring ourselves into another combat exchange? No, I'm still crying. <laughs> <laughs> If I fuck your dad, will that be better? Okay. <laughs> I would point your attention to the test balance technique under Evade and Observe, just to get your attention onto something that your character may want to do. All I was right. thinking about that, because I, I, I am going to uh, Evade and Observe. So, let's go ahead and bring us into another combat exchange. It seems like everyone oh, will yeah. just keep fighting. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What would he do? I'm evading and observing. Okay. I will note, though, for NPCs, the higher their balances, the more techniques they can use in a combat exchange. Oh, no. That's, that's their benefit of not having a spectrum. They just have one direction for their principle. Mm -hmm. They've already settled on what they're obsessing about. Yep. That's how Azula lost. Then I have an idea. I'm going to evade and observe. All right, to evade We're and observe. We're all going to beat him with the power of friendship. Jai Pan. Well, I'm going to beat his ass with guilt. Um, <laughs> now I'm going to beat his ass with his sword. <laughs> I'm so mad I couldn't use the battle music for this, but the freaking stream deck up and died. Mm. We're going to defeat him with the power of friendship and this gun I found. <laughs> <laughs> and immense violence. Um, so can I use uh, pressure? Yeah, pr so you're essentially, you're saying, saying you would use it as an attack, and attack. if you get what you want on your roll, you can say your pressure. So basically, there's three tiers of combat, and... Right. Um, I want to pressure, and I want to use live up to your principle. Okay, so that would be going back to before the exchange, then, because live up to your principle is a balance move. Oh, okay. So we can do that. All no right, one's sorry. done anything in the combat exchange yet, but... You, right. So here's the thing. You have to guess his principle. And if you get close enough and act it out, I'll say you're you're doing the live up to your principle. Uh, so we need to know what stock principles there are. There aren't any. Oh. I mean, it's just a oh, wait. Uh, sorry. This one says when you take action in accordance with the values of a principle, mark one fatigue to roll with that principle instead of whatever stat you would. Oh, roll. you would want to live up to your principles for the stance move. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. What principle would you be living up to? Uh. I, I roll at this point, point. All right. and it would give me plus two. So how is your role as the Earth Dancer coming into this fight? Are you going to serve him? <laughs> Am I going to? Step up. Yeah, step up to the streets. It could be. I, I, don't, I might be making too much of a hole here, but this is a one shot. Who cares? <laughs> I would say if you want to attack him with an Earth Dancing technique... Well, uh, I was, I was, one of the things I was going to say was, um, my family served you people for years. You kept us in a cage, and then you watched the thing that I was taught, my history, go extinct. I won't let you do it to any, uh, I won't let you control anyone else. Not me, not Yinzin, and not my people. And then I fire another rock straight towards his gut. I would say in the idea of the combat, this would be great for a test balance. So you can still do that, but I'm... Evade and observe. That would be yeah. evade and observe, though. Yeah, no, and, and this is perfectly fine. Oh, yeah, You're no. essentially yeah. pressuring him to reveal why he's doing this. Oh, okay. Which is cool because... I oh, was... you know what? Yeah, all right. Yeah, no, so you can yeah. still do that, but we'll get to that in the combat exchange right. when it happens. Yeah. So, Teak, are you, what one of the three combat approaches are you using? Um... Since that's what determine when you're going. <laughs> And he's not allowed to defend if we are going off your last thing, right? Yes. Oh, right. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to, I believe, defend and maneuver from yep. your choice. So whatever he's doing, he's not going first. Cool, okay. 
Um, well, if he three of you evade and observe, if he chooses to advance and attack, and Teak's not. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yes, but he's not going like high, high tier. True. I'm gonna. Sm- sm- I'm not gonna I don't want to. I was gonna smash, but I don't want to <laughs> do more fatigue. Call smash. <laughs> Let um, me smash. Wasn't Becky got stick. Mark one fatigue to instead choose to entertain my weapons loss. Um, I got loot. Trying to figure out which you one makes me not do fatigue. Well, you can do strike. It's just if you if you take the one fatigue for strike, you're forcing the choice. If you you can still just hit him, and then I choose how he takes the damage. But yeah. with that, you wouldn't have to take fatigue for that. Perfect. Then I'll do. I'll do that. Okay. So you're advancing and attacking. You would go first. Go ahead and roll the two d six. Then add passion, which is zero. And not very passionate. Goddamn. Okay, six. so it's six. So this would be where you have to shift your balance if you want to still use the technique. No, I, <laughs> shifting balance isn't that bad unless you're like unless you're at like two and well, he's off. almost at his he's almost at the edge. <laughs> yeah, no, you off. don't want to do that. So to not you can just that. miss, I guess. You, no, you, you can miss. you can say you can say that either the pressure's too strong or anything, you weren't able to move forward. Yeah, I'm feeling a little pressure, okay. y'all. I'm gonna take a sec to breathe. <laughs> All right. So you just got yanked out of this hole, so you need a moment to breathe. So yeah. we'll move on to Gonlong, who is choosing to advance and attack. Dick. He is going to strike Sun Lin. Let's go, motherfucker. Uh, he is going to mark one fatigue to force you to mark two fatigue. Oh, I'm out. Oof. Okay, no, you're not. So <laughs> you're only taken out if you lose all your fatigue and you can't take any. I am at full fatigue at this point. But you have conditions. Mm. So, you, ah, so you can mark conditions. You have to choose one that's thematically appropriate. But which angry? Ones, yeah, that, that's perfect. Yep, you can mark angry. So you're only taken out if you lose all your fatigue and you can't mark a condition. Okay. No, I'm pissed. All right, perfect. So uh, all the evade and observe folks can roll. Eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, uh, ten. You can choose two and evade and observe. Wonderful. Uh, nine. Yes, nine. You can choose one. What'd you roll? Seven. You can choose one. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is, I am going to test his balance and bolster and uh, hinder him by like just spinning the fuck out of this wheel and throwing him basically into that steam pipe he busted open. Ooh. Uh, uh, I... That. Uh, do I get to choose the status that that would be? Uh, it's an appropriate stat, so I think I get to choose just as the game master. Right. I'm, I'm going to say he's. Uh, I'm going to say he's trapped. The, okay. the, if the steam vent's right in his face, and he are, and he did that to himself, I'm going to. I'm going to say he's trapped. Uh, and to test his balance, I'm just going to, uh, essentially try to clear the tears from my eyes, and my voice, and try to pull my testicles out of my abdomen, and uh, yell at him. No. Even if brother was dead, he'd be happy getting away from you! Oh, you can tell that hurt him deeply, even more than the steam in his face. As he pulls himself out of the pipe, his face just red, not from the anger, but he turns towards you, Yinzen, and you can just feel his eyes boring into the back of your head. I've only done what was right and from that word i'll say as the test balance mechanically speaking you're sensing that his principle is duty all right i yoke the throttle and just go all right rest of you do we all get this or just yeah, well, you all hear him speak. So I'll say that even though it was Yinzen's test balance, the rest of you can hear that and kind of intuit just what this guy's mm-hmm. focusing on right now. And he said to me before, just like, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. No, he said, I- I've only done what I thought was right. Yeah, he, yeah. He, so we know that his principle is duty, so. All right, then I I fucking, like, I, I lurch my arm uh, around the pipe that's leaking. You take my knife, then so must I. Test balance, I shoot the fucking mist at his face. Uh, how does that test his balance? Uh, wait, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. They, must, they must answer honestly. Yeah, this is, they, this they, is an emotional... Uh, then... Yeah, this is much more emotional combat than physical if you're using this Yeah, technique. you know what? That's So this would be like you calling out well, his duty on. and the fact that like, yeah. you know, he's, he's, you not, could... he's not doing his duty to his kids you, or something. Have shit. you shifted your balance away from center? 
Yes, a you could if, you could if you want, and don't forget that one that one fatigue clear for taking. Yes, this thing. that's true. Uh, you could commit and recenter yourself. Shift your balance toward one of your principles. That's right. I lose. A, I, I drop a fatigue by choosing evade. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll do that. Shift your balance towards one of your principles. The next time you live up to your principle, do not mark that fatigue. So that so you've j so going back to the last combat exchange, you've had that you've had that admission from him that he is sorry about what happened to his parents. But now you know, even if he does care or at some level feels the what guilt, does it fucking prove? Yeah, no, gonna he's gonna do it again if it's what's right for the Fire Nation. So mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I may have felt guilty for like a second there, but I'm back, and this fucker needs to go down. Uh huh. So yeah, that makes perfect sense if you want to move towards back towards your center or towards action. I'm moving back to center. Perfect. So, Jive Hen, we've already narratively done it. So you're testing balance. Uh, I suppose. Okay. So you've. I, oh, I'm just going back of what your original uh, yeah. verbal attack on him was. Yeah. So you've att you. I will say that is an attack on his duty. Yeah. He now knows that his duty not only has done all this, now doing this. So he, you're kind of poking a lot of holes in his sense and right and wrong. So I'll, I'll say that your rant against your imprisonment and the fact that he's enabled that through his service is going to shift his balance. And you can tell he is getting very deranged. Uh-oh. That's always good. So anyone want to do a thing, a thing before we go on to our next combat exchange? Nope. Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. How would bath effects work? We had one. <laughs> I also need to pee. So if you can take him, if, you know, you'll get your break when you take him down. Damn it. Yeah, we're kind of like too deep into this now. We gotta like, if we... It's almost if, 9 if... o'clock and I haven't had dinner. Scott! Yeah, kill him real quick because my son keeps blowing up my phone. All right, all right, all right. So next time of exchange, pick your approaches now. Quick, 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 quick. Uh, evade and observe. Bolster and hinder. Evade and observe. Evade and observe. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're picking your approach and then the technique inside when you were after you roll. Yeah, evade and observe. Defend minute. My fatigue is fucking Defend crazy minute. right now. Japan. Bolster or hinder. I'd like to uh, impede. All right. So another evade and observe. So Teak goes first. Go ahead and roll. Go Teak. That's a seven. You can pick one technique. Hell yeah. Uh, we retaliate. All right, so you're preparing to inflict fatigue. All right, advance and attack. You all picked Vaynerzer, right? Yes. Yep. All right, so he's attacking. He has four techniques he can use at the end of his balance. And we really fucking pushed him. He's striking. All he's striking all of you. Ow! He is fucking just running that uh, wrench. Everywhere. Running wrenches. Yeah. Catch this wrench. <laughs> exactly. He's just running across. Just, no, 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 But the no. retaliate gets it. Exactly. So each time a foe inflicts fatigue, if you, uh, so here's the thing. He's, you, you can, he's not marking fatigue. So you would all get to choose if he's marking fatigue on you or condition. Oh, he's marking fatigue on me. I, I spent he's, the last yeah, couple of rounds yeah, rebuilding mark my fatigue. Mark fatigue. 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 What is the... Uh, uh, so you have three choices. You can either mark to fatigue, mm -hmm. or you can choose to mark a condition, or shift your balance away from center. Mm. Ooh, if you can... Wait, I, have to do, I have to mark to fatigue? Yes. Oh, wow. If you run out of fatigue to mark, you can mark a condition. And I now have two conditions. All right. If you choose to mark fatigue, your retaliate comes in. Which so you, would you want probably to do want point. to do that. To do what? You want to mark fatigue so that you deal fatigue to him. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I didn't even read the rest of this. It's any of them. So you can pick. Whatever. Okay. Oh, well, for fuck. Uh, sorry. Well, no, that's, that's on that's me. That's only for retaliate. No, yeah, well, I mean, for no, strike is you You all get to pick. Oh, okay. If, unless I mark fatigue on Gone Long, you all get to choose which one of the three things changes. But for it's all... retaliate, it's each time a foe inflicts fatigue. It doesn't say a condition, on you. No, inflicts fatigue, a condition, or shifts oh, okay. your balance this exchange. Is it one fatigue, though, or two? two. It's two for yeah. strike. I, 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 I just took guilty. I'm, I'm still taking the fatigue okay. just because I spent so, a chunk of time. So what does Teak do to retaliate after Gone Long just wheels around the room and starts striking everybody with this wrench? Um... And retaliate isn't like a, I can't hurt him. No, no, no you are exactly hurting him. You are retaliating. You're, nice. you're countering him. Okay, I'm going to um, 
you know, he's, he's hitting me with a wrench, right? So I'm uh-huh. grabbing it with water, and I'm like, you're not my dad, and I push it back in. His... <laughs> nice. Oh my god. So, you inflict one fatigue on him. Okay. Evade and observe, folks, can now roll. Let's see. Five, six, seven. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, you can choose two techniques in the evade and observe category. You can choose one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell at him, and you're not my dad either. As I spin the boat again, uh, <laughs> testing his balance further. Seven. Uh, seven. You can pick one evade and observe technique. Wait, wait a minute. I have an idea. Uh, can I choose to have my thing be balance and then have it go back if I do commit? Uh, you can. Mm. I would say yes. Okay, cool. Then I choose to do that. So you're testing his balance first? No, I'm committing and then bolstering and hindering. Oh, okay. So... Because I can do two, you said. Okay, so how are you hindering, I guess? Hindering... Well, can I do the thing I said I was going to do before with the pipe? Uh, yes. Blinding him with steam. Yeah, blinding him with steam. All right, so that's... I'm going to say that's going to stun him. He's He was already... He had to tip mark fatigue to stop being impaired, so I'm going to say that's going to stun him. He's had so much steam in his face. Yeah. Uh, that, and then commit, shift my balance back. All right. You're getting more committed to your values after seeing this man. You've tested his balance. Uh, what is Jaipan doing? Hinder. Okay, so you're hindering. I'm going to say that's going to doom him between the two of you. You got the steam in his face. You're probably chucking rocks where they shouldn't be. <laughs> his little bitch of a son is just crying. Yeah, I'm going to say <laughs> he's because Zaipan is fencing him in, he cannot get out of the steam vent. He is actively being burned. Uh, he's in grave danger. Mark one fatigue every few seconds or each exchange until you free yourself. He has he can't free himself this exchange because he's fighting. Got him on the ropes so, now, boys. And then the balance test. That does not need to be rolled, but you do need to mark one fatigue. I need to mark fatigue? As okay. part of the balance test, yes. Let's move back up to three. So that's shifting his balance away from center and off the track. He's going to lose his balance, and lo and behold, it is the end of the exchange, which is when... Losing your balance comes in. So kicking this bitch into high gear, going out that past that flame gate. He has three choices. He can give in or submit to your opposition. He can lose control of himself in a destructive and harmful way, where he can take an extreme action uh, in line with the principle, then flee. Okay. I think, I think it's most appropriate that he gives in. As the rocks keep pelting him and he's breathing in this steam, he's going to collapse to the floor holding the rent with the wrench just propping up part of his body on against his shoulder <sighs> stop this one more rock pink <laughs> how do you respond i can't go back home dad not until i find gun not until the world knows. Miss him. And he collapses. I miss him too. Uh, I'd like to do something. He's unconscious. <laughs> oh, oh no, I know. I know what I must, I know what I want to do. Victory teabag. I grab him by the back of the shirt and I drag him over to the side of the boat with one of my short swords out. If anyone wants to say anything, say something now. Yeah, I would yeah, not you... let you kill my dad. I, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. I watch role play that out for me, please. Because What are you doing? Getting rid of the trash. He's still my father. Oh, I, I know. I turn the boat so, like, you... I, oh, I, I, like, I rebalance myself. I, I turn back at you. I, I pull the mask up. I know I'm not killing him. What are you doing? I go over to the lifeboat and I throw his body in there. And I go to where the supports are to drop him down. He can't come with us. It's true. If I get to lose a family, he gets to lose a son. That's equilibrium for me. I, I look over to uh, Captain Xian. She is like coughing up water, only just now coming back to consciousness, having her face on the floor as the water just kind of circulated in front of her. Uh she's pretty out of it. She she probably won't be able to put much of a fight, if, even Captain, if she's able to get back on her feet. Out of respect to you and the nation that raised me, I'll give you this opportunity to leave this ship. 
But it's no longer under your command if you choose to leave. And then T comes up and is like, but not because you're a woman. Because that doesn't even play into it at all. And no one thought about that. I mean, he thought about that, but I stopped him. It's the true. Captain <laughs> Xion is going to do just a kind of a pan shot. Now just seeing you kick him into, let's say there's a lifeboat next to the bridge. It's, it's That's a, what I figured. It's, it's a fantasy ship, whatever. So the, the whole lifeboat kind of just swings away. That's a new Mori mechanism. It's an invention. Yeah. Swings away from the bridge, just drops into the water. The, you've ju the boat is uh, just. I was offering to let her get off. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I, my sword was at the ropes. I threw the body in, but I didn't cut the ropes. Even yet. better. I like this. So the boat is now passing through the gate that marks the end of the harbor. After this, it, you still have kind of the ends of the island on your left and right, but they slowly go away from you. So she's looking around. I'll pass. And she jumps onto the boat, and her jumping on the lifeboat causes the mechanism to make it swing away, and the lifeboat hits the water, <laughs> and the lines break free. You have the control of the ship! I'm gonna need to fix some of these steep vents. Does any of you know how to pilot a boat? Certainly not. Do not put me in charge of this boat. <laughs> Would I? Somebody grab the helmet to make sure we don't hit anyone that. Anyone can grab a wheel and hold it steady. I don't think you've been on many boats. That's fair. My, I'm just, just going to point to the statue of Azula and just say, don't hit that. <laughs> Floor it! Floor it! Floor it! My, uh, my uncle took me ice dodging when I was 15. Didn't go well. All right. <laughs> well, as Sun Lin white knuckles the wheel and <laughs> you and Yin Zin keeps the- I'm just the imagining Nui Yan just sitting out on the deck sunbathing right now throughout that. They gotta go. Is, that, <laughs> is it okay to come up? Yes. Okay, good. He comes up. And as the five of you look around, the scroll kind of tucked into your waistband. Sure. <laughs> you look out and Nuan goes, so the colonies? Well, we can take this wherever we want, really. I mean, it belongs to us now. Something tells me the crew is going to need a very long chat, but after what you've done up here, I think you can handle them. They are probably going to be very curious. The Sugihorn guy played the whole time. I don't know what's wrong with him. I think that's great. I think he thought the ship was going down and he just wanted to entertain people. Maybe. Anyway, so <laughs> on that realization, the camera pans off of the bridge, large cloud of steam kind of bellowing behind it, and our brave adventurers off to reveal the secrets of the Fire Nation. Book zero. End scene. Oh my god. Well, that's Avatar Legends, everyone. I know it, it always, you know... Oh, it takes a little bit. It's, it's always the, hard no, the, the, the system. The combat is always going to be clunk because it's it's weird. I like it, but it's also hard to I, suss out. I will say I appreciate out of like the five rolls that I made, two of them were snake eyes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tyler's eager to get yeah. home to his boy. So we're, we're going to close this up here pretty quick. But thank you all so much for joining us here at the table. Uh, and camera, camera one's camera, off. <laughs> cameras are leaving, but Hello. we'll catch you guys uh, next time. So have a great evening, everybody, and thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll be and for everyone in the stream. I'll be in the chat for a little bit, even if the stream ends. So feel free to give me thoughts and notes because I'm desperate. I okay. I like this. Uh, and after like finally like sussing out like what the fucking combat is going to work like. I don't mind this, and I actually am, like, really interested to try it again now that I have, like, a little bit more hands-on of approach to this. So, yes, this, this is something I'd like to return to, in all honesty. Yeah, actually, I really like it. I That's uh, great! Yeah, I think it's a great system. Yeah. Little, little... And tough. for anyone that was that didn't get to see my rant beforehand, Magpie Games, so the published stuff is being still being printed. The Kickstarter is done. But if you want to get your hands on this, you can actually look at this same adventure on their quick start. If you go to the link in chat, and then also if you search for Magpie Games Avatar Legends, and yeah. you can get the quick start right now. I always, am, I, I always love more improv heavy storytelling games mm. uh, where the system, uh, I know I've been working on my own D6 system and this is a lot more like, th there's a lot more rules to this than mine, but honestly, it, it kind of helps you to know like what you're doing right and where you're there. going. What was it? There's a piece what, of what you're dealing with. <laughs>
Yeah, and, and I like I appreciate the multiple different ways of handling a combat encounter. Not not just knocking the fucker out, yeah. but like, you know, pushing them to the limit of like, oh man, what the fuck? Like you could literally uh talk them into killing themselves. Like that's just you know, I, the balance, I'm sure someone will come across and say, the balance mechanic's so broken. You could just eliminate NPCs without having to fight them at all. I'm like, that's kind of that's the, the point. point. That's the point. It's a sanity meter. Yeah. And also, for the more, like, like, like Gon Long had four steps of balance before you can knock him off his. And all the while, he's supposed he's getting to... getting stronger. Yeah, he's getting stronger. He can use more techniques. I kind of fudged and a couple it, of times for timing. very but. thematic with the show. Like I said, like, you know, when Azula's fighting at the end... It's kind of, it kind of like matches up to what we're dealing with here with this. Yeah, no, I'm I'm glad we were able to get one of your core NPCs from your backstory into this. I made one for all of you. Uh, Five Long got to show up, but yeah. Yenzin <laughs> yeah, was yeah. able to negotiate negotiate that problem. Mm -hmm. Huh. All right. Well, that was something that was five weeks in the making. I'm glad that's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank uh, you all so much for joining. We'll catch you guys on the next stream. And uh, you can take us away, Tyler, whenever you deem fit. Bye. Say, 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 say you love him. We love, love you, Chad. We love you. I love you. Flame.